Flint City Council meeting sponsored by the Flint City Council. Broadcasting on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint on Sundays from noon to noon. And on YouTube, a live stream sponsored by the Flint Pipefitters Union, Locals 370s, encouraging us to hire local. Facebook live stream sponsored by the Paul H. and Angela R. Herring Fund, determined to make a difference. Thank you for watching. the total budget for the state of Michigan. It's nothing we'll be able to live off of. And I would ask you to think about this. Think of all the places you can go into our community and smell cigarette smoke. You're going to be able to do that with marijuana. So you'll be in a park. Maybe a family will be pushing their young child down the sidewalk in a stroller and someone will be in front of them smoking a joint. Maybe you'll be in front of our courthouse and smell it. Because people certainly smoke cigarettes in front of our courthouse right here on Saginaw Street. So I would urge council and constituents who may talk to to vote no on this. Um, it can't be just about the revenue. Because if it is, we've got three of the big sins covered already. I'll call them sins. Three of the big vices right now, if, if this passes. One is cigarette smoking, raises tax revenue. Two is alcohol, raises tax revenue. The legalization of recreational marijuana is three. It'll raise revenue. The only thing left that I can think of, think about this, is prostitution. We could have brothels in our community all over. Imagine the revenue that that would raise. So you could actually smoke a joint, go have a little sex, get done with that, have a little drink of maybe some cognac, smoke a cigarette, relax, call it a day. Imagine the revenue we could raise. Think about it. It can't be just about the revenue. No one's talking about the negative effects, and we've seen in states where they have legalized it where accidents have increased. Not accidents just in general, but accidents from the use of recreational marijuana. So I'd recommend you to vote no on one, because we will be going down that slippery slope. Think about prostitution next, okay? It's legal in Nevada. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Del Moroni. Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Woodson. How you doing? Uh, I'm going to start off by saying, man, y'all have been doing a magnificent job uh, for the past couple of meetings. Uh, I hope I'm not saying anything that, that's going to jinx, jinx the council, you know. Uh, but, uh, Y'all been doing a great job. I mean, getting out of here early on time and everything. So, you know, I like to say great job. You know, we can speak bad about you, but we don't ever tell tell you when you're doing a great job, you know. So I want to lead off with that. I also want to talk while y'all are having investigative hearings. Uh, you should also try to get DHHS down here too and ask them to start sending money down here and ask them to uh, change the policies because everybody in the city of Flint has been affected with this water. And every time something comes in here, it's always for, not against it, but it's for six-year-olds or seniors. What about the people in the middle? The people in the middle was poisoned. Water heater has to be leaking or ineffective in order for somebody to get it. Plus they have to have an income, medical, you know, we allow Governor Snyder to set the narrative here where it's all about the land. Well, we had TTHM, carcinogens, pathogens, E. coli, you name it, but we had a cocktail in this water. Just 
uh, what, the past three weeks, I know there's somebody that you know have passed away in their house from respiratory failure, pneumonia, or something in the past couple of weeks. They're not telling us that Legionnaire is at an uptick right now. Pneumonia is on an uptick right now. Everything is happening, and it reminds me of 2014 when we was doing four funerals a week. I mean, I went to, what, three funerals, and one of them was my cousin, and one was my aunt, and both of them had pneumonia. And then I was diagnosed with pneumonia uh, two weeks ago because, I, I mean, I didn't catch it until I was up in McLaren visiting her, and she had it. It's, it's upsetting that, that things are happening around here in the city and county and people are not paying attention to it. We have more than just lead. They say the water crisis is over. It's not. We haven't even dealt with the health part of it. The health part is going to be worse than the lead, the TTHMs, and everything else. You have multiple melanoma. You have leukemia. You have non-Hodgkin's. You have all these different things going on that's going to affect the people's health here in Flint. And we have to do something about it now and get in front of it. So we need to bring DHHS up in here and tell them to start sending more money for people with chemotherapy, send some uh, doctors in here that specialize in cancer. And, uh, you know, make sure that our public health person is going to the hospital asking them to do re uh, viral respiratory uh, testing, sputum samples, and uh, influenza testing, because all the doctors are not doing that. And that should be the number one thing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Madam Clark? Our last speaker is Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Quincy Murphy. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Quincy Murphy. First, I want to thank you guys for um, talking about the Jefferson School um, situation. Um, hopefully, it'll get moved to special affairs to council so where you guys could eventually vote on it because it's been in there limbo for a long time. And I don't see why we need to wait for six houses in order for the school to move forward because it's been on the agenda for a long time. So hopefully you guys be able to move on that. We want to do some things over there, but it's kind of hard to move and you don't really have the school completely. Um, secondly, I just want to thank the mayor and our administration and the council. The state of the, uh, the mayor's state of the city address was awesome. I attended it. I um, brought my mother out um, with me. She was kind of um, depressed because, as you guys know, my sister passed and she wasn't getting out the house, so I asked her to come to the Capitol with me. And we didn't know, we was going in with the unexpected, we didn't know what to expect, but to just listen to that speech and to be outside of city council chambers and to be in the Capitol, because I had some reluctance about being in the Capitol, but once I went in there, it looked nice. That was my first time in there. Um, I listened to the words that was coming out of her mouth. I listened to her to, um, say that General Motors was um, moving back to the, the Flint water, which is revenue. You know, um, I heard her talk about Dewey Park. Yay. No. Um, so, but no, just the speech and the accomplishments that she made over. I was really um, impressed. I encouraged the council president, who whoever be the next council president in, for the next year, to consider doing at least three city council meetings in the community. Instead of just coming down here all the time, maybe y'all should get outside of the council chambers and move outside in the different wards. And for the first year, y'all may do pick three different people wards to have it at the Brennan Center or something um, over there in the second ward or the first ward. Just do like, do three per year. Don't, don't do a lot because I'm I'm quite sure it takes a lot to move this stuff to set up. I don't know the process. Inez, I don't know if I think you guys did do it before. I really would encourage getting outside of the council chambers and going out in the community and doing these council meetings in y'all wards. The ninth ward, 
eight, whatever, y'all decide. The first year do three, the next year do the next four, you know, just move it around. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about is the Ethics and Accountability Board. And I know I'm, my time is up, but I'm going to wrap it up. Um, they ha I went to their meeting. <clears throat> they having um, problems and issues being able to tap into that $250,000 that was created for the Abundance Department. So there are some just some um, kind of budgetary um, expenses that they need to get themselves set up. I would consider I would suggest that you guys make do a referral tonight or something to put that on the finance committee and have them present you guys a itemized budget on what they need to use and y'all do a budget amendment to allow them to utilize some of that abundance um, department budget to help them get going because right now you guys are not paying the director for the abundance y'all not paying the human relations director so that money is just sitting there and by the time they do get to hire one that money still they not going to be able to eat up all that money and eventually y'all going to end up taking the money and moving it um next year because it ain't been spent so i would suggest that you guys look at doing a budget amendment within that department or use some money to put it it, give them some money and then once they hire their bonds to just replace that money that is just going to be sitting there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Madam Clark. Yes, um, Mr. President, we do have one more speaker. Mm -hmm. and the person of Reverend Stacy Smurf. Can you come forward, please? Come forward. What's your point, Councilman? You know, I don't mind <coughs> suspending the rules, but our rules say that slip must be in before that meeting start, so I just witnessed that. So I would move that we suspend the order and allow um, the speaker to speak. There's a motion to, to suspend the order, to allow the speaker to speak. Is there a second? Mr. President. Councilman Davis. I second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. Yes. Any other members of the public want to speak tonight before we close this part out? If not, I'll be supporting the motion for this speaker. Any other discussion? Mr. Um, President, I was just wondering if the speaker um, who has been and was here during special affairs, if maybe he didn't realize that there was a slip that he had to fill out. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Voters, if yes, one no to allow the pastor to speak. Okay. Proceed, sir. Good evening to the council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, I come here tonight to plead with you. I don't know if the city council collectively can make a statement as it relates to the legalization of marijuana. But if you cannot, I come here tonight to plead with you as individuals, as particularly if your parents, to take a stand against this. I want to tell you quickly that I have a two-year-old. His name is Christian Michael Swim. My son has tested positive for marijuana five times now in the past year. Because when he's not in my care, he's in the care of someone who has a medical marijuana card. The significance of that is, is that the police department and the family courts and our local agencies are turning the other way because of partisan politics and things that have nothing to do with children's rights. And so I ask you, what do you think is going to happen to our children if we're already dropping the ball and protecting our kids from irresponsible medical marijuana users? Look to Colorado. In the state of Colorado, they have an epidemic of children who are being exposed to a toxic exposure to marijuana. This is not about what party you belong to. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. This is about do you care? Do we care about our children? Don't listen to what the politicians are telling you. Look at what the, what's happening to our children in Seattle and Colorado and other states where they've done this already. So I'm here to tell you as a parent that I'm not the only one that's affected. And what about, what about a community that's already reeling from chronic unemployment when it comes to teenagers? What message are we sending to our young people?
who are already struggling to get jobs, struggling to pass drug tests to work in construction industries, when the state government is saying that we need more shovel-ready jobs for kids. Isn't that what they're saying? But our kids can't get the jobs because they can't pass the drug tests with our current laws in place. So what are we doing when we're saying that we're willing to open the doors in our community to more drugs? Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest to you tonight, we don't need more drugs in the city of Flint. We need more jobs. We don't need more narcotics of any nature in the city. We need higher literacy rates. We don't need more narcotics in the city. We need stronger families. So don't listen to the politicians or uh, the pundits who are saying about the revenue. Have, have you ever heard the saying, I don't want to preach to you? What is it that a man should gain the whole world and lose his soul? All money, as we say in the hood, isn't good money, ladies and gentlemen. All money isn't good money. And so I wind down again. I, I don't really know what the city council can do. If you can take a position collectively. Maybe you can't. But each and every one of you live in the city. Each and every one of you, I know most of you, you have children. I know all of you care about this community. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here tonight. So I'm appealing to you as a parent. I beg of you, I plead with you as a parent to go and research for yourself the facts that I lay before you tonight. I will be back again, and you'll be seeing me put out videos and articles as we get a little closer to the election. Because it's, it's typically, it's, it's, the old saying is the last thing we see or hear is the first thing we remember, right? <laughs> so I want to wait till we get a little closer to the election to put out some of the things I have. But thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight. And I beg of you, please think about it. God bless you. Thank you. Well, we're at the point now where we have two minutes. Two minutes. Right, Delina? One time. Two minutes to respond to our speakers. Who would like to go first? Uh, I saw Councilman Griggs's hand put apologize to our last speaker. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the vote. Okay. I'd like to apologize to you. Okay. For then I up. saw uh, Councilwoman Worthy say. Um, I appreciate the comments about medical marijuana. Um, or no, recreational marijuana. I've been so much into me medical marijuana lately. Um, but I guess my mindset is people are going to do what they're going to do. And regulating that is really hard to do. Um, there's so many arguments for that. And I'm not saying what's right or what's wrong. And I'm not um, going to say that there needs to be legislation for this. But even prostitution, Mr. Del, Del Maroney it's just overcome our streets and it's unwanted. And maybe if they had a place and it was legalized and rules and regulations, maybe <laughs> it wouldn't be such a problem. Listen, you don't have to agree with me. I'm a, a lover of Christ and I have two young children. Um, and I'm also a Democrat, so figure that out. <laughs> I, just, I just think when we've done things like uh, prohibition, um, and other restrictive things that it hasn't worked out in our favor. History has shown us that. So I am in favor, though, of laws of uh, like drunk driving laws, laws where if the medical marijuana use or, or just recreational use is, um, is affecting someone uh, because there are people with allergies and sensitivities to that, that it be restricted to places where the public isn't uh, you know, subjected to that because I get it. Cigarette smoke, it was everywhere. Bowling alleys, you couldn't go as a kid without coming home smelling like smoke and I'm thankful that we don't have to do that. Smoking is legal, but there are rules now in place to protect us and I would hope that we would work and strive as, who knows what will happen. Uh, but as as this legislation, um, you know, passes or not passes, I still hope that we come to some regulations uh, statewide that will protect those uh, children and those who uh, have allergies and things like that. And then another, just one more thing. Can we put that ombudsman uh, finance discussion on as a special order on finance? Get through the chair to Mr. Mays. Councilman Mays, do you have any objections of that going on? The discussion of the on the ombudsman on the plan, for the finance. Okay. Thank you. That's so ordered without objection. All right. 
Yeah. Any other council, uh, Councilwoman Galloway? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you to the um, speakers that spoke. Um, I would just say to parents to really do research. Um, the Michigan Municipal League um, did a um, one and a half hour presentation during general session in 2017. The convention was in Holland. And actually, there was a speaker from Colorado who was an advocate for um, legalizing recreational marijuana. Um, but her position had changed because what she noted is that the increase of fifth and sixth graders and the use that they did. Um, she showed video of Sharpie colored markers being changed into pipes to smoke marijuana. Um, she had experienced children that had gone to the hospital because they had gotten the gummy bears or the, the chewables. Now, there is supposed to be something in legislation that is no longer allowing them to make those chewable things look so much like those things. Um, they noticed that the increase of marijuana use in high school, 11th and 12th graders, had increased to almost 80%. And so, you know, you're going to have to be a population that becomes, <coughs> one, um, aware of what's going on, and you need to be talking to your children. And you need, if your children are, at, are expressing anything, some of this stuff may not be ADHD, but our children are around so many things. Like you say, your child tested for something that you know that they didn't get, and, and we're not thinking about secondhand smoke <coughs> where this is concerned. And so I get it. So all I'm saying is, as parents, if you care, you better start figuring out what to do where your children are concerned. Okay, uh, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish I had more time. I want to speak to Mr. Stacy Shrimp as well as uh, Mr. Chris Del Morano. Morano. God don't bless mess. This here ain't nothing but another genocide to young folks. If you want to get rid of people, and I mean poor folks, white, black, blue, green, this legislation is already yeah, set in place. All we could ever I, I be mean, is a consumer. We already got the only no jobs. We have nothing. Now we're down to, to we can't even do a strip party ticket voting. We don't even have the DC no, no, no more to even, when it comes to marijuana, they'll make sure that get you to the poll. But when it comes to voting, on my side of town, we have is red sign say, go vote. We're not even competent enough to get the decencies they have everywhere else to be educated on who there's to vote not, for. There's not, there's now, not we could put a nail in our coffin we do destroying our kids there, going and coming with a planned poisoning of our residents. Now you're adding really poisoning with marijuana. So kids is already the one. We can make choices. It's not right to put this on uh, uh, young minors talking about some marijuana. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. We got girls joining Boy Scout. We got churches on every corner. But how, how are we going to keep how playing? Am I supposed to get, this is a joke. How this am I is supposed a joke. to get what line Now, it, it might be funny to, to God's to real, the, not only blessing, but he got to take a judge. To the OBS, and it's coming. America's under judgment. Billions of dollars with hurricanes. Keep on playing, Flint. You're going to see a judgment come on this city you ain't never seen before. Okay, okay. We got so to stand that, up. Either you for God not or you're not. not. We got churches anymore. with politicians right, going fine. inside of their churches and God's pulpit leading people astray. We can't just keep doing this. Somebody got to stand up here, either be for God or you're against him. Be shamed to me, I'll be shamed to you. I had other stuff to say. Mr. Arthur Wilson, thank you for the compliment. Mr. Murphy, you're absolutely right. We need to redeem much as we can because... That movement called the Master Plan is moving, and this is a part of it. Yeah, hi. So Thank you. Just call me for this number. Any other council people? Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman May. Oh, hey, Doctor. Yeah, you, we had um, five speakers. I'm it sounded right. like Miss Worthy right now. further Record. down on the agenda. I think I heard that right. It's going to talk about this some more. Right now, in the yeah. Discussion that in these two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like two right now, I'm working. What's up? About Proposal one, Chris Del Maroney, and the last speaker. I would say to you sitting in this seat, I don't know who you're talking to around the city. And I don't know who got custody of your child. 
but I don't try to take uh, on no extra work, particularly uh, if it ain't in my war. But if you come up I'm here and say and that a minor child is uh, testing positive this week, and you I ain't got custody and you ain't petitioned the circuit court, then if you petition the circuit court and it's true and you can prove it, somebody's going to get a referral to the police okay, department. So and if they don't, the if it happened so in the city of Flint, so let me know. And I'll Saturday, talk to some Sunday, folks. Monday. Complaints should always be taken and investigated uh, and followed up. So I don't want to mix apples and oranges. I see on Facebook little kids, drops. parents giving them weed to smoke. I also know that they give them alcohol and watch the little baby stumble around. And, uh, okay. Some and stuff and, uh, in this um, world we just, just can't meet, control. Just meet up with different All I can do I is try to go to heaven. I'm not going to probably go to the devil for both. Yes, I'm proposed to one. I'm probably not going to go to the devil for doing ordinances and legislation that um, regulates Recreation well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can or probably do like medical marijuana. I might go to the devil and I'd be saying, Lord Jesus, you sent me to the devil like for that Sunday legislation and, like, and maybe uh, I'm no, worthy no, to go. No, no. But I'm going to be praying um, and asking for forgiveness all along the way, like hoping Sunday. I can make it. Um, in two minutes, we can't discuss this stuff. I would ask for about a couple minutes yeah, anyway. You don't hardly hear folks come up to the mic and say the council is doing a good job. I might say it on Monday right, and change my mind on Wednesday. So we appreciate that um, about the good job, Mr. Bush. The wilder crisis is not over. We will proceed with further discussion on these matters at the end of this agenda. RL, always good to see you. Chris Del Maroney, Mr. Woodson, and Quincy Murphy. We will continue to talk. Thank you. City Council meeting sponsored by the Flint City Council. Broadcasting on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint on Sundays from noon to noon. And on YouTube, a live stream sponsored by the Flint Pipefitters Union, Locals 370s, encouraging us to hire local. Facebook live stream sponsored by the Paul H. and Angela R. Herring Fund, determined to make a difference. you for watching. Petitions and unofficial communications, Madam Clerk. There's only one. Okay, I would encourage my uh, uh, colleagues to look at 180545, Assamage United States District Court. Notice of Simmons in the civil action received September 21st. Uh, regarding Kristen Wells versus City of Flint at all case number and then it goes on. Are there any other communications from the mayor, Madam Clerk? 
um, that are here. We we see them here. Communication. One communication. Traffic engineering. Okay. And appointments. Mr. President. Councilwoman Gallagher. I move approval of the appointment to the Genesee County 911 Consortium Commission, Rodney <coughs> Stephen Branch, <laughs> AKA Steve Branch. Okay, there is a motion on the floor to approve uh, appointment number 180543 of Rodney Stephen Branch, AKA Steve Branch. Please. Councilman Griggs. There's been a motion to move, and it's been properly seconded. Is there any discussion on the appointment? Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Clearly, this appointment ain't part of the 13, is it? <laughs> I don't think so. I know it. Um, yeah, I'll be supporting this motion for Mr. Branch, who is also our city administrator. 911 used to be owned and operated by the city of Flint. And so now it's run out there, if I'm not mistaken, out in the state police post. I think that's where they stationed that. We lost that operation during the emergency manager law. I wasn't in favor of it. So anybody who we can get on there, but to have the day-to-day -day operator of the city, Mr. Rodney Stephen Branch, I'll be supporting it. And I will continue to say the name. Rodney <laughs> Stephen Branch because I just knew him as Steve Branch. But now I got a whole lot of respect because I know Rodney Stephen Branch. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Field? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. The vote is nine yes, zero no on 180543. Right. This brings us to our master resolution. Uh, what is the council's pleasure? Mr. Chair? Councilwoman Fields? I would like to move the master resolution, including add-ons number one and two. Point of, point of, point of information. What's your point? What you mean add on one eight zero five one seven point one? <laughs> it's already on there. You just have to move it to point one. Yeah, we because it wasn't but one add on. Just one add on. But you oh, wanted. Sorry, I thought there were two. So <clears throat> no, there was, two. There was one of them was an amendment. Uh, what's your point, Councilman Garrett? There was two. One had to do with proposal two, without proposal two in it. And the second one was the money for the police department. But that was that was that, that was a point one. Right? Okay. No, okay. you're not. But it's okay. We, we got right. No, <laughs> we're, we're, that's what we're trying to correct here, is that that it was not that it was just one add-on. Right. But we moved the one eight one eight zero five one seven. We made it a point one. Point of information. Yes, ma'am. On the one concerning the police, we yes. amended that, so that was right. considered an add-on, even though it was amended. Right. It was considered a point. It one. was considered a point, a point one. one. Yeah, we moved it to a point one. Do I have? Does someone have to make note of that when they move a master resolution when the number has been changed? I was going to. But okay. <laughs> I got you back. We got. We got it. We got it. So, so now let's hear your motion again. <laughs> I moved to. Uh, God. Tired. To move um, I move the master resolution, including add first on add-on. I can't remember. And the point one. one. And the if point one. Indicate by the title of the That's right. Go ahead. First, uh, unless Mr. Mays, because he's the sponsor. Right. Okay. You want to go ahead and mention the title? If you don't mind. Okay. It's a resolution supporting the establishment of an independent citizens redistricting commission. Mm -hmm. This is at the state level. And we're not talking about supporting the ballot issue per yeah. se, but this is the concept. And this is add-on number, add number one. Absolutely. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor. Mr. Mr. Chair. Councilman Guerra. I second that motion. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman Mays. The add-on number one are in 
You know, we are supporting with this resolution an independent citizens redistricting commission kind of that process and the context of this resolution supporting the establishment of an independent citizens redistricting com um, commission, in my opinion, can help knock down all this gerrymandering Absolutely. and give us a better um, proportion of seats in both the state and in Washington, both state and federal. So I'll be supporting that and I won't separate it. Um, the resolution that was amended, 180517.1, I would like to separate that. All right. Any other separations, Councilwoman Worthy? Uh, um, our add on number one, as Mr. May said, is, um, or Mr. Guerra, uh, was, is about uh, proposal two uh, without proposal two in it. So uh, the council is supporting uh, independent citizens redistricting commission. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm Definitely voting yes for uh, proposal two and three, which uh, so both supports the vote. So proposal two um, will help put a stop to gerrymandering, and proposal three is um, to help make it easier to vote, no reason, absentee vote. Uh, there's a couple other things I can't think of right now. I knew it more later. Anyways, both are really good proposals. So regardless of how you feel about recreational marijuana, there are ups and downs on that one. I totally get both sides. I really do. Uh, and, and I do believe that needs to be regulated heavily if passed. However, proposal two and three, hopefully we all can get behind on, and support uh, our, our vote. And so I highly recommend, it's a 15 days away that we go to the polls, okay. that we vote. Well, I meant, I highly recommend that you go vote. <laughs> so, um, in 15 days. So, um, that's what add-on number one is. And other than that, I have no discussion. Councilman. Mr. 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 President, yes. I would like to separate 180540. That's the rubbish collection. Okay. Thing, and then it would also be, com it would be connected with 180544. Four. Four, those oh. two I want to separate. Is those the only two resolutions dealing with the Republic Services contract? Mm -hmm. I need them to separate. All right. <sighs> Any other separate um, councilwoman? Yeah. Councilwoman, uh, well, councilwoman Galloway. Okay. So, um, well, it seems like we'll be doing everything piece by piece. Is there? Um, I would like to separate one eight zero five four two. Which one has it been separated? That's a good question. <laughs> Can we figure out where the resolution is? Is there any other separation? Uh, point of information. Which, which ones have we separated? You separated 180517.1. You separated 180542. You separated 180544. Okay, thank you. Okay. And Wait a minute, where is that now? The first page. Three. I, didn't, I didn't announce that one? No. Okay, well, yep, we did separate that one as well. Okay. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Now, if I may, um, and maybe I may not, but that um, 180541 dealing with uh, $5 million mm -hmm. as it relates to the Department of Health and Human Services and then lead service line stuff. We just had a speaker kind of speak on the department of DHS. I don't know if that was Mr. Murphy or somebody, but I would like to, if I may, I'm not separating it, but I, I looked at that this weekend and I need a brief explanation on that before I feel comfortable not separating it and passing it. And I want to know if Mr. Newsom can give me that. 
Mr. Newsom, are you able to give us any information on 180541? If he can't, and Mr. Branch, anybody can, that's $5 million we finna vote on. I think I'm reading that right. That's a lot of money. Point of information. What's your point? And if, is it okay if Mr. Newsom shares when this came before council for discussion, this particular resolution? In committee. It came in committee. Let's see. It was yeah. in committee. We, we, we made sure to submit this one on time. This is the 2000. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? This is the 2000 fiscal year 2018 2019 version of CHIP. Um, just a reminder, you all passed the 2017 2018 version um, because of some issues a little late, right before the end of the fiscal year. But now we're ahead of the game. Um, as soon as it was approved by DHHS in Lansing, um, beginning of October. Um, you know, roughly the beginning of October, we bought it for, uh, before before this body. So this is the five million dollar chip funds for service line replacement. So, Miss President, yes, may sir. I yield to Miss Galloway. Go right ahead, uh, Mr. Newsom. Please um, understand. I remember when we approved the grant. Right. I don't remember discussing this particular thing that's saying that um, that any unspent grant funds, you know what I mean? And so that's where my question lies. I know that we accepted it. Yeah. We adopted it into the budget. I'm mm -hmm. talking about what, what this resolution says is going to be done with the money. I don't remember us having the conversation specifically around this. And so did I miss that? Was that also in that conversation? Well, it would, it would have been a part of the conversation in committee. I just don't think you all separated this particular resolution out in committee last Wednesday. So, um, you know, this was part of that, um, of what was submitted. This was not walked on. This was in your package um, as of last Wednesday. So I'm not sure why that was not brought up, but let me explain that a little bit. Um, now, as you just so council is aware, this funding is specific for service line replacement for chip eligible homes. So ch homes where children are eligible for the child health insurance program at the federal level. And so for just just a little bit of service, just a little bit of background, what happens in the field um, during service line replacement, if there's a home that's chip eligible, um, that home the service line replacement for that particular home is funded out of the chip bucket of money. We like to use that money first because it's only available to homes that are chip eligible. And so we might not necessarily exhaust that money for service line replacement um, for the balance of this year and for next year uh, because not every, we might not have $5 million worth of um, chip eligible service line replacement to do. So that's what that alludes to. Some of that money, we might not exhaust this funding. We don't know. Um, considering that we have less lead in these out, you know, in these later phases, and in addition to that, um, uh, roughly speaking, 20, 25 percent of the homes already are ch are, are chip eligible, meaning 75, 70, 70, 70 80, 75 percent of the homes are not. So that's the reason that you see that. So we may or may not exhaust this this funding bucket. All right. Mr. Um, Newsom, it also says that this is to provide lead service line and lead fixture replacement for eligible families. What is the lead fixture replacements and how do eligible families take advantage of these funds? So let me, I'm not going to, I don't know if Rob is here, can they can speak to that a little bit more. Our program manager isn't here, but I don't know, Steve, if you want to talk, talk about Right, that's chip eligible only. I think she's asking well, how, did, that, how do I access it, that? Yeah, the resolution is saying that it's eligible for eligible families to also have lead fixture replacements. And so what defines lead fixture replacements and how do eligible families apply for these funds to have whatever these fixtures are that need to be replaced? So I, I'm going to step out on limb a little bit. This is kind of outside my wheelhouse. I think that the funding might be available for fixtures, but this, what we're using the funding for is for service line replacement. 
I don't know, Steve, if you want to go in more detail um, other than that. Come right, but I think. Come on up, because I want these questions answered. Cause I, I think the, the, the question that I would have then with that is who's deciding, like, is the grant, because lead fixture replacements, you know, what does that mean? Is that water heaters? Is that. Let's let, let's let them tell us what it is, because your question is valid. You want to know what it is, right? Right. That's very clear. Rob, uh, Benzik, if you have any information on Councilwoman Galloway's but I question. Did, I, but I, I wanted to add one thing. And as decides, many things as you want. No, who decides how the pot of money is allocated? Okay, you know again, as Mr. Thank Newsom you. stated, it's for CHIP eligible homes only. So when they go in and do a lead service line replacement in a CHIP eligible home, they can go inside and replace the water filter, a water faucet if it's lead uh, fixture as well. That is only for CHIP eligible homes. It can't be used in any other, any other application but for a CHIP eligible home only. So they can go in and replace the faucet filter if that faucet filter in, a, in, a, in that home is of lead. How do people know if their home is CHIP eligible? They're like going to know when they come by and do the lead service line replacement. There's a listing. We get a listing every month. And they change from month to month. Okay. And people so move we can around. see a list of that. And so the fixture replacements that can be replaced are their faucets? Right. Their faucet just fixture. their faucets. Right. There's not include, you know. No, no, no. I, I, I just want to understand. Right. So you have a list that is available that has addresses on it? Right. So, okay. Can we? And I think again, that, that listing is, is not something that we make public because it is, you're dealing with children and that information is highly confidential. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Fields. I'm glad this question has been raised because I got a call today from a constituent and I, I really wasn't sure what he was talking about, but he said he had heard, and I don't know if this was part of the, a news story or what, but he had heard that there was some program that each household, low-income household, could get up to $7,000 for replacing inside, you know, plumbing fixtures, whatever, and I said, not to my knowledge, I'd never heard of that. Uh, wait, 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 continue. Okay, well, uh, maybe somebody in the administration, are you aware of that, and does that have anything to do with this particular money? And then I have something else I want to comment about this. Okay. So I, I, I want to research the $7,000 figure that's higher than what I'm, I'm, I'm used to, but as you may or may not know, the RAP program for um, those residents that are eligible for um, can participate in a home audit and receive, I believe, up to $1,000 potentially. I have to check that number, but up to $1,000 um, for um, fix, you know, from fixing fixtures or leaky appliances or upgrading as part of their conservation funds, which is different than the relief programs, a different um, pot of money, so to speak. So that's an additional benefit of the RAP program that's available to us through the Glebo, through the Glebo um, Grand Bargain. Okay, may I make a referral to, to have uh, that explained? It will be, uh, it's already been requested as a special sure. order, or you can, you can. Okay, so you'll include that to, particular. That will be part of that. The, yeah, that will be part of the presentation. Bill yeah. Relief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, that'll be part um, one, one other comment on this. You know, one thing I'm wondering about is now here's five million more for um, lead service line replacements and uh, once again, in, during the investigative hearing or the hearing, okay, um, we're going to have AECOM there, and part of what I want to ask them too is at one time they estimated that there are only about 1,200 more properties that actually needed lead service lines replaced. Okay, now this is all not, you know, jiving together with this predictive model we've seen, which shows all these areas that still need to be done, and the 97 million that's total available for lead service line replacement. I mean, I don't know if we're going to need this additional five million for that particular use. So, and I don't know if ultimately this money, I know that the win money, the state can change the use of it, and I know the, legis the Michigan legislature can change the use of some of the funding they're giving us, but I don't know if this money 
can be changed or if the program guidelines it can only be used for lead service line replacement so so to be clear and I don't know if, if De deputy director Epke explained this but just so we're clear that 97 million is part of that that um, settlement right and so the settlement states that the state does not have to provide this money or the feds it has it says that the state has to make sure that this money is provided through a series of funding so there's 20 million that came from the federal remember the federal share of the wind funds the first 40 million 20 million from the state that's 40 and then there's 47 million that the state has to come up with before we hit the 10 million dollar contingency which gets you to 97. that 47 million could be a mixture of chip and state money so in theory this 5 million is part of that 47 million that the state has to um, provide to us and so I just want to be clear that when if you read the wording of the settlement what's been explained to me numerous times is that this is not in addition to this the 97 million this is part of the 97 million we're supposed to use as much chip funding as possible I don't know if if um, Amy if De deputy director FK explained it or not but that's been made very clear to the administration that chip money is to be used as and considered part of that 97 million so that's that, the that clarification is very helpful thank you no problem Mr. President. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, councilman Griggs uh, I'm still kind of hung up on this lead fixture are you telling me there are faucets made out of lead is this what you would call pot metal is that the same as pot metal Mr. President, Councilman, point of information. What's your point? Yeah, I'm hearing you call Rob Benzica. Well, yeah, he could come up. I want, I want, I want you to get your questions answered because I'm having, I'm, you know, I'm having an issue, but, but I want you to get your questions answered. Go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Benzica. Uh, Mr. President, if I can. So, Councilman Griggs, um, what, what they're replacing are leaded brass fixtures. So, um, we didn't. We didn't end up with lead-free, quote unquote, brass until just recent years. So many of those fixtures have a high lead lead content of brass in them. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Councilman Mayes. Yeah, Mr. President, through you to my colleagues as finance chair, or to the administration, was this uh, resolution discussed in finance committee meeting? I believe you all did not separate it out as part of the master as part of the master resolution in committee, but it was brought forth as and part that's of how it got batch. from here to there. And right. then I look at the agreement, the grant agreement, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Now these grants, even though they finance, um, I wouldn't care if they came in through grants committee, Ms. Winfrey's committee, and was moved to finance after that or whatever. But I know we ain't got time to move them all around. But when I got the email and I was preparing, um, looking at the agenda, I seen that um, long grant agreement that goes with this resolution. And I haven't had a chance to look at that um, grant agreement and resolution. Let me ask you this, Mr. Newsom: How long y'all been waiting on this to waiting on us to approve this? I don't. I, I know we submitted it two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago. So before that, how uh, long ago? Uh, probably. You know, I know we submitted it two weeks ago. This coming Wednesday, Wednesday so today's the twenty-fourth, the tenth. So y'all submitted it in September, October. 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 And they didn't respond it this fast. So here, here's, this is go back. I want to. And the reason I'm asking is because I want to decide if I want to take action tonight or do I want to learn more. Well, there, there's, I, I want to brag a little bit and say that we have been doing a lot better job with the drawdowns and the reimbursement requests for the service line replacements. I'm not, we're not quite where I want us to be, but I think we're um, performing a lot better. With that being said, there's work that's being done and being invoiced for CHIP eligible homes, and we pretty much, we've almost caught up. So what we're saying is any, any work that's being done now for a CHIP eligible home that's been that's at the beginning of this fiscal year for the state, which is October 1st, this is on hold. We can't 
we can't push this through until we have resolved to amend the budget. See what I'm saying? So the last thing I want is for us to have other delays in those reimbursement requests, which we've spent a lot of time getting that process down. Last thing I want us to do is to hold something up for another two weeks because we're waiting to amend the budget. Yeah, my biggest fear, particularly as a new finance chair, my biggest fear is approving five million, ten million, twenty million, a hundred million and ain't properly vetted it and did my due diligence. I just have a nightmare about being a finance chair and on a council and reading something that I should have checked and double checked. But in this case, maybe I'll approve it and I'm not where I need to be yet. Let me say this. Um, who am I talking to? Am I talking to the administration? Am I talking to council? Let me say this, Mr. Newsom. Now, you told me as we move forward on the investigative hearing dealing with the flow of money and re reimbursements, and this is in fact one, that about time we get in the hearing, we was going to see some movement. And I see the smile, and I've had private conversation with you. But my position is this. The position I set in, Whenever you see something worth a million, five million, I don't want it passed through finance committee without it called to my attention. I don't want to pass it through. I know how these meetings go because I'm going to catch it either in here or now, send it back. So just keep in mind, I might pass it this time. But I don't want nothing over a million, five million, ten million coming through without some detailed discussion. When I seen that agreement attached that I'm getting ready to vote on now, I'm like, do I want to do that before I read the agreement? But I'm not going to micromanage y'all, mm -hmm. but I am going to micromanage myself in my knowledge. So I didn't separate this from the master resolution. I used the opportunity to ask questions. I ain't comfortable with lack of communications, whether it's in a council meeting, a finance committee meeting, or if I get a phone call that a big resolution is coming. Five million dollars to me is a lot of money. Thank you. Any other discussion? So let, let me talk about what the motion is on the floor then. The motion on the floor is for the pass of the uh, master resolution with the exceptions of those uh, resolutions that were separated. Is that everybody's understanding? Is there any other discussion? Point of information. And your point is? Could you just state <clears throat> Yes, I can do that. You separated the 180517.1. You separated the 180540. You separated the 180542. And you separated the 180544. Yes. Hearing no discussion, Madam Clerk. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. The vote is nine yes, is zero no on the master resolution. Okay. So that the first separation would be 180517.1. That's the first separation. Ms. President. Councilman. I separated this one because as we discussed it, I think coming out of um, special affairs, I understood what was said, um, but I separated it because I have listened in special affairs. I heard the discussion about the 100,000 and the change from the original to 73, but this 73,000 will deal with the outfit and the 20 cars for radios. That's it. Okay. And so the 100,000 would have did what? So just, just, to re just to remind you, 
Originally, we needed $173,000. We found $100,000 um, for jail equipment, as, a, as, Ms., as Councilman Garrett asked me to come back to you all with, with a report. For what equipment? So we're use, we were going to use $100,000 for jail equipment. Jail equipment. equipment. But now we're Jail equipment. equipment. J-A-I-L. What yes. type of equipment was that? So don't ask me for okay. specific, specifics. I can report that back to you. I don't know the specific. Unfortunately, So the jail here. equipment will be on hold. Correct. And we talk about it later. later. This is just the outfit, the new cars. Have the new so, cars arrived yet? So there let me let me back up a minute. There are two okay. remember, there are two parts of that resolution. Mm -hmm. It was the data migration right. for the cold cases of fifty three thousand. And then there was another hundred and twenty almost four thousand dollars for the upfitting of the vehicles. That's hundred and seventy four thousand dollars. So what I'm saying is is that top priority is the fifty thousand dollars. So we use remember that for the cold cases. Right, for the cold cases. We use the first fifty thousand of that hundred thousand for the cold cases. The first fifty at a hundred thousand. Right. The hundred thousand ain't here no more, is it? Well no, we that's what we're saying. We're gonna repurpose it's on hold. It. Right. We're repurposing that because we're not getting the jail equipment. But the seventy three thousand, none of that'll go to a cold case. So that's that's where I'm going. So let's let's see. I just wanna know what is the seventy three thousand. It's for the balance of the money for the MDTs for the For the what? The balance of the money. For but what? The balance of what money? For the upfitting of the cruisers. And it's come out at seventy three thousand. Right. Yes. And that'll yes. pay the cruisers. That'll pay the cruisers. And sometime in the future we'll talk about the cold cases and the jail stuff. Is that a fair way of saying it? Yes. So this seventy three finished the cruisers. Finished Have the cruisers arrived yet? No. It's twenty of them. It's supposed to be 20 of them. That's when is the expected arrival of 20 police crew? Sometime next year, for, I think first quarter or second next quarter. Next year. Right. But I'm, we moving the money to upfit well you, them now? You have to move them in advance. That's the problem. You have to you have to upfit way in advance and get this stuff ordered. All right. I've supported it with that information. Okay. What's up? Any other discussion? Huey, so can would, would it be okay to um, have this as a discussion? Because in looking at the old resolution mm -hmm. and looking at this one, um, it said that the new record systems on the other one was only fifty three thousand six hundred. Yes, yeah, so and that the um, purchase of the twenty MDTs was a cost of one hundred and twenty. Right. So you talked about the displacement. For the, um, I mean, the the 120 was for 20 new cruisers. Right. You talked about the 100, but now you've added more to well, the data than was on the previous. No. Oh, 53, I'm looking at it. 53 plus 100, so 53 for the data migration plus 120 for the um, terminals for the upfitting gets you to 173 thousand dollars, right? 173 and six, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. So take out a hundred that we found that we're going to repurpose that was going to go to jail equipment. So take that away, and you're left with seventy-three thousand six hundred. That's what's in front of you. Right, but Huey, uh -huh. that's not what the resolution reads. What is the resolution? The resolution reads: purchases to transfer police records from State Records Management System (SRMS) mm -hmm. to the New World Records System at a cost of fifty-three thousand six hundred. Yes and to purchase 20 mobile data terminal MDTs at a cost of 120 for the 20 new cruisers. Yeah. That's why I was confused. Okay. So now it's... 53 plus, so let's do it again. 50, 50, I just, maybe I'm just confused by the way that this is worded. Well, the sum total of all the purchases is 173,600, right? Is that... Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is what you don't have, the number that you don't have in front of you is $100,000. It so was. the equipment for the yes. jail wasn't included in here, that's and right. that's what's confusing me. We're, we're using equipment. Instead of taking money out of fund balance, right. general fund balance, we're repurposing $100,000 from, um, from the purchase of that jail equipment instead. Right. So that's I just, I'm sorry. It just wasn't on here. That's why I, I was confused. Okay. And that I'm, was an old resolution before we found this $100,000, okay. so I'm, okay. hopefully that clears it okay. up. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? 
Hearing none, Madam Clerk, on 180517.1. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. The vote is nine yes, zero no on 180517.1. Okay, the next separation order 180540. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Yeah, the reason I separated 180540 and 180544. Councilman, would you, would you, you want to talk about them at the same time? I think I'm going to kind of okay. talk about it in general because they, and then we'll sort it out. But I see large numbers there. Particularly in 180544, and um, the numbers are not as large in 180540. But I think what is important is the language that I read as it relates to these resolutions. Um, I've seen the guy from Republic here, mm -hmm. he's now gone. In the rest. Okay, so we'll see if he shows back up, Mr. President. But what I'm gathering is this. I'm gathering that this is a long-term contract. This ain't a year extension. I've seen many years in there. So, Mr. Newsom, Mr. Branch, somebody tell Councilman Mays what this contract is and what's being proposed because we usually put stuff out for bid, and this one ain't going out for bid. This one is extending something in the terms of the old contract. Now, I might or might not be against um, extending it, but I want to talk, and I'm going to ask to talk to Republic because I'm getting calls, and we circle back on missed garbage pickup. But then I still remember when we was in negotiations before some things that was talked about and promised. So I can't speak for my colleagues, but a garbage contract is a major piece of business. Oh, yeah. And I know that I ain't discussed it the way I want. So I'll see if I move on it today, why and why not, or will I? try to postpone and vet it and bring the parties in. Now, I'm willing to sit here. It's only 8.30, <laughs> but I'm willing. I, I mean, ain't no motion on the floor. I'm, I'm dead serious about garbage service in the city of Flint. I'm dead serious about this outsourced garbage when we used to own garbage trucks that's moving around. So this is a serious matter. And I'm going to see how serious my colleagues is want to get, even if it comes to suspending the rules. Mr. Newsom, tell me in general, how long is this contract we fit in the vote? Is it a contract? Is it short term, long term? What's the total amount and what do we expect to get? It, it is a long term contract, uh, Councilman Mays, and I do agree with you. This one definitely should have went out to bid. The problem that we had was finding enough potential suppliers in lieu of what happened you know, two, years, you know, two years ago, whenever, when this last came up to bid, finding enough suppliers that could support the city of Flint and, as opposed to a, trying to negotiate better terms with Republic. And so unfortunately we were not able to put this out to bid in enough time so that we can do... Give me a summary of the terms that you negotiated that's better than the last. Okay, so... In, if you know. So in terms and if you don't, maybe we'll hear from Republic, but I don't want to put well, nobody on the spot, but this is the type of stuff I'm going to probe into. And I understand that, and that's your right. So one, you know, I think the biggest parts or the biggest pains um, in terms of a negotiation was, um, was, was around recycling. Was what? Around recycling. Whether we were going to continue to, they were going to continue to support recycling as it was, or um, discontinue that service or do it on a subscription basis. Another sticking point was the issue with um, trash outs, with blight, with, with blight. We have a lot, 
we have a lot of blight, as you know, and we spent a lot of time trying to figure out whether or not Republic was going to charge individually or have that in the base price for those trash outs. And so I, I don't for those get trash what? Trash outs. So there's basically trash outs. When, I trash some, outs. when I evict someone, and you're asking the finance guy about garbage. Oh, you're talking about when somebody get evicted? Yes. Okay. Exactly. So those are the major sticking points. That, we, that was um, the major stickling point with me last time, <laughs> because one company say they pick out everything, pick up everything on the corn. I mean, sitting out. And one company, Rizzo, said it, and then Republic said they, you know, I had experienced some certain things. Mm -hmm. And then it was some giving of dumpsters, and I don't know if that was taken back. But what is the years involved in this contract? Two I mean, so this is two and a half years. Since two we did and a half years. Yes, this is two Nobody and a half. discussed one year at a time. We did, but uh, Republic proposed a higher price for a shorter for a short extension. Okay, and we didn't put it out for bid, even if they're the only one who bid. So right. somebody got smart and said we'll do and take it to the council for an extension. Is what is this called technically an extension? I would say that a it's change a, order. It's a change order. I would not. Yeah, say it's that's extension. a big change order. Yeah. Tell me and tell the public the dollars and cents involved here in this so, change. I don't have it right. I've seen some like nineteen million or so. It's what? total. The total life. The total lifetime of the contract is nineteen million. Nineteen million. It's See, 12. I didn't even look. I just got a brain. Yeah. <laughs> and remembered something. So this one is for 12. This, this is major. Mm -hmm. You bring a $19 million contract before me. Thank was you. it in finance committee meeting? Yes. And it was never discussed in this much detail. Republic wasn't there, was there? Yes, yes they, were. they were. Was there? Yes. And did they speak? No. Where was I at? You were there. You were chairing. I was chairing it. And so this one might get sent back. You a Republic tell me why I shouldn't ask that this be sent back to committee for further discussion. Since I'm telling you, five million, nineteen million, y'all gonna start telling me, Mays, it's a five million, it's a nineteen million, Mays. Republic is in committee, and I'm going to tell the council because I don't know what happened. I know how our council meetings go, and I'd be voting no to adjourn because you can't digest this stuff this fast. If you're the type of council that just pass resolutions and don't vet and talk, y'all going to have a field day with us. So with that being said, council, Councilman, I do appreciate the need, and that's one of the reasons why administration wanted to get this in front of you before the contract Okay, expired. thank you. I'm going to get to the bottom of it if I may. If I have to suspend the rules, I will. But let me say this. How many people have had a call in the last 30 days about this contract from anybody in the administration or republic? Anybody willing to tell me you have, Ms. Galloway? You have, Mr. Garrett? See, I have not and I'm the finance chair. If I did get one, it wasn't nothing of substance because I didn't get it. I done played this political game before. M Mr. President, I want to hear from Republic if I can because sure. I hope he ain't smiling. I don't know what this is. Do you, you, want, you want to hear from it? Yeah, I want to hear from him because I'm saying who calling and lobbying and talking or whatever done went on, but two people done been contacted. Can I, I haven't. And, and I would yield this here to quick answer if it's quick, but I'm on a roll. I know what I'm thinking. I just want to say that um, I did receive a call from Gary. I talk to Gary often when my constituents have concerns. The position that I took was if the administration was happy with it, and Republic was happy with it because we say that, you know, we want to make sure that the administration has the ability to do things. By the time Gary called me, he wanted me to know that an agreement had been reached. Was I aware of it? And so that was the extent of our conversation. Thank I you. simply said, if the mayor is happy with it, the administration is happy with it, and the finance chair says it's there, and you guys are happy with it, um, I have some Not things to share. Not the finance chair. You're talking about the finance director. I'm the finance chair. Let me say this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Say again. Yes. 
would you would you also yield to Councilwoman Fields? Yeah, I will because there's no motion on the floor right now, Great. so we Council ain't under time Great. restraint. Mr. President, once we yield, yielding means you give up the floor. It doesn't mean you get the floor back. It do. I I think that's something we need to handle with the parliamentary. Okay, well, let's, okay, let's do that. Let's okay, do that. Let's moment. do that sometime. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I want now, to that's say your point that. of information. What's your point? If she don't want to yield, I'll continue. <laughs> okay. I think um, I'm with Ms. Galloway on this. Um, I actually talked to uh, also Republic because I, ha I had a couple calls, which I have to tell you, anytime any of my constituents call me for some reason garbage didn't get picked up in an address I mean they address it immediately I I think that's why the public has been so satisfied with Republic services and they pick up everything there's no arguing um, I think the customer service is extraordinary and um, what what I was told basically big picture here is that um, Basically, the cost of waste management is going up. The market is really uh, getting more and more expensive, you know, all over the country, quite considerably more expensive. And that the negotiation between the administration and Republic is really in the city of Flint's best interest because one of the things that had been considered in order to keep uh, costs down is to either not provide recycling or to do recycling as an extra fee to uh, citizens and the mayor said no absolutely not we don't want to charge our citizens more for recycling uh, we'd like to keep that as it is so uh, Republic agreed to do that um, and then the other issue was one of the things that uh, Republic has found and correct me if I'm wrong but that is very expensive is that uh, landlords have these evictions and they leave these huge piles of trash and they may do it multiple times within a two or three month period and perhaps ultimately we may have to look at changing our fee structure so that landlords have to pay for these extra dump pickups but I believe and Mr. Newsom correct me if I'm wrong but I believe what was negotiated is pretty much the same services we have now uh, for a very, very slight increase. And um, each household is assessed now how much per household and how much will the increase be under these negotiations? It, right now it's $150.84 um, $150 is what the special assessment is per, per parcel. And so we, I need to sit down and look at the numbers because we might use a mix of the fund balance in the 226 fund, $1.6 million is just, you know, sitting there. Um, and so we might use a mix of fund balance um, and um, increase in the special assessment to pay for the additional cost. We, we'll, we'll bring that to you. It won't be more than $21 per, 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 per household, $21 a year per household. It won't be more than that. It's 28 Okay, so under yeah. this negotiation, the maximum it could increase would be $20. It would be $21 a year. A year. Point Point of okay, information, now, though. What's your point? What did you say was the total increase? Like 20, I get the 21. Right. So well, when you say total increase, you mean? Like from what we had before till now. For the special assessment or for the contract? For the contract. Like the contract. What, yeah, for the contract. For the contract, um, it depends on what you, what you look at. So the problem is that we, you know, the, the actual cost increase was roughly over the lifespan of the contract about, I believe, 2.0 million. But the problem is, is that the scope of services had to stay, we had to either decrease the scope of services, as Ms. Phil said, or we had to um, increase the price because of some of the challenges I think that Gary's going to get into in just a second. Okay. Okay. Can I continue? Mr. President. I'm still have the floor, I believe. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Okay. We'll get you to council. All right. Um, okay. So as I understand it, given where the market is, okay, what was explained to me is that this went out to bid, um, neither the administration nor Republic felt that they would be able to, that the bids coming back would be nearly as economical as this, you know, potentially 
small change of maybe 21 more a year um, to, to retain the service services we have. Could, could you just, and I'm not holding you to this amount, but um, could you, Mr. Hicks, or you, Mr. Newsom, tell us how much you think the increase might be if we had to put the whole thing out to bid rather than just do a change order and a contract extension? Um, just a guesstimate. Um, and thank you, Mr. President and yes. Council. I appreciate it. And before I answer the question, if I can, I would like to just deviate just a bit. Mr. Mays. Mr. President. Council. I'm going to listen, but when I start on something with Newsom and go to him and yield and do, it's kind of a disservice to my train of thought. So I'm listening, but okay. I'm not going to keep doing this. Okay. Appreciate you, sir. I, I, Mr. Mays, I just want to... I did reach out to you, sir, um, three times, actually. What I, happened? It said your voicemail was full. Yeah, my voicemail tell me I'll play it right now. I'll tell you what it say. You want to hear it? Um, so come I, come come let me do this, Mr. President, because my credibility is on the line. No, sir. My voicemail stay full. It tells you and asks you to call me back. I, and that's what that's exactly what it say. You want to hear it? I, I deal with thousands. I, I, and so don't stand up and say you reached out. Do what it say then. Don't say it's full. Say what it say. You want to hear what it say? I know what it says. What it say? It said your voicemail's full. Do you want me to recite the entire voicemail that you And made? what do it say after it says full? Please call you back. Call me back. Three times. Sir. Yeah. I don't too much miss calls, sir. You want to go under oath? Now I'm telling uh, you, Mr. you Pratt, call me three times. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, what's, your point point what's your point of order? He's, he's like yelling at him, and he's just here to, to tell us information. Can we calm it down a little, please? Thank you. Thank you. I'm very calm. But when so, so, but now here's, up, what I, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to get into this circus that we're well aware that let we can me do say this, well. Mr. President. So proceed, Mr. If I may. For some a businessman to stand up here with a $19 million contract and say he reached out to me three times on a cell phone, I got office, I got staff, I got a cell phone. I'm not buying it in this public arena. So, Ms. Worthen, this is what I'm saying. I've been around a long time. This is a man standing up. I reached out three times. Reach out four. I don't even know if I believe you reached out three. That's what I'm saying since you're saying it publicly as you start to premise this conversation. Maybe you have. Only God knows. But I'm here to tell you, Mr. What is his name? Hicks. Hicks. Mr. Hicks. Councilman Mays don't have a reputation of missing three business calls. And I'm not going to let you stand up here and say it. It could be true. Only God only knows. Proceed from there. But I hear you. But I'm going to prove to you what my voicemail say. Since you say it's full, I want you to go further. If you heard my voicemail, you would have heard what it said. It repeatedly says, if you miss me, call me back. If you miss me, call me Council, back. Councilman Mays, let me say this. He's made your point for you. He said what you said it said. No, he didn't. He said that it's... No, he didn't. He said, period. I reached out three times. Your voicemail was full. That's what he said. But you asked him what did it say, and it said you said... He didn't never say it said, call me back. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Houseman. I'm telling you. If he did, I didn't hear it. He, he didn't say it said, call me back. He said it was full. That's what he said, and that's what the record will reflect. He didn't never say it said call me back. I said it said call me back. Now that's what I, 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 ain't, I ain't even agreeing with what you're saying, Mr. President. And if you're that interested in my brain and what I hear, we'll check it because it's recorded. I think we need but to anyway, I let him proceed said. with his opening Point statement towards me. Point. Could Mr. Hicks and Mr. Newsom respond to the question I asked them? Yes, or they respond to other people's questions. Thank you. Yeah, but you, he, I yield point of point of point of order. I yielded to her. He addressed me. Now, if she don't want to play the game and yield back and make a big issue, I won't yield to her no more. I'll finish when I called him up. Okay, Mr. So President, let me hear what he got. Here's to what say. I want to do. We've got Mr. Hicks here. 
I'd like for Mr. Hicks to respond. And if we're going to act professional here, which we should, we've been doing pretty good. I'm hoping that we don't get all crazy and everything. Go ahead and respond, Mr. Hicks. I'll give you an example. Thank you, sir. I'll give you an example of a bid that just transpired here within the last week in the Fenton no, no. Township. No, he was the guy. Fenton Township's current rate was somewhere around eleven dollars and twenty-three cents, something like that. My bid came in at fourteen dollars and eight cents. The nearest competitor to me is a local competitor, and they were eighteen dollars and sixty-five cents. I can continue to rattle off more also. Uh, City of Montrose, the bids were open. I raised the rate tremendously. I was the only bidder. It just keeps going. The rates have dramatically increased. And the service over the last two years that were priced based on the court order was something that was never sustainable. The City of Flint is generating more trash today than it did the first year that I started the contract. Uh, Mr. Newsom <clears throat> was provided with all dump tickets, um, it wasn't all dump tickets, but a spreadsheet of every dump ticket. And in 2013, when we started the contract, we generated 29,000 tons of trash. Today, it's 33,000 tons of trash. We want to get into the, to the recycling part of it, where costs have dramatically gone up. There's a thing, if anyone gets bored, you're welcome to look up, called the China Sword. China has shut off all recycling to that, to that country from us. 60% of our recycling used to go there. It doesn't anymore. That's all now being sourced and brought back into the United States. It's driven the commodity price way down and the cost to process it way up. You're seeing communities across the country stop their recycling programs. I give the administration full credit for keeping your program here just based on the number of water bottles that we collect. That would have all been landfilled. So there are multiple factors that brought the rate up, and I truly believe, as a partner with this city, that had it gone out to bid, the rates would have gone up tremendously. Keep in mind, as I stated earlier, the rates that were through the court order were not sustainable. And that's why I believe that company is no longer in business and is forcing rates up higher now as we speak. Okay. Thank you. May I ask Mr. Newsom one question? Now, Councilwoman Fields, we're going to let you have that question, but then we're going to get back to this separation, and Councilman Mays did separate it. So I want to get back to him, but go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Mr. Newsom, there's a reason why the administration is promoting um, this contract. Can you give me just a quick overview of why the administration wants, is, is supporting this contract this way? Yes, yeah, so it, it, we, given Mr. Hicks's feedback, there were two ways we can do this. We wanted to make sure, and the direction was clear, we did not want, we did um, not want to have any fewer services that were provided um, already in the contract. We explored um, very, we explore very deeply actually um, taking some of the services away and doing those on an a, a la carte um, subscription based um, approach, right? That in itself did not address the um, additional cost, plus, residents would have then had to pay for those services. So, like I talked about before, the eviction, the trash house with the eviction, recycling, we know that recycling is very important to the environment. Um, this, that, and the other. So with that being said, it was either de-scope or pass along or, or manage um, higher prices. And we spent a good, you know, good portion of about two or three months going back and forth, pouring through the numbers, and this is the approach that administration agreed with. Okay. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to move these two for approval, but if you think it's more important, since Mr. Mays well, separated Mr. Mays them separated to go back to Mr. To Mays, then to I'll, I'll hold off on my motion. Thank you. Councilman, go ahead. Yeah, because that motion, in effect, would have gave up more time than me on my own separation. So I appreciate it. Look. The best way to, the, the way to come to this council and get votes from me 
ain't to say you reached out three times to my cell phone. I'm a business person. I got staff. We got an office. I talk to Ms. Brown, I talk to Davina and them. If somebody come to my professional office and leave a message, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. So let this day be the day for the city to know Councilman Mays got an office. I'm a professional. I ain't nobody you just reach out to and say you can't get me. That's the staff of city council lets Councilman Mays know who calling, who looking, and who what when they can't get me. Now, if Republic is a professional business too, Mr. Hicks, and all due respect to what you said, understand that with Councilman Mays. If you reach out to me that many times and can't get me, contact my professional office and staff. I'm sure I'll get it. Now let me say this, I done watched contracts vetted and not vetted for over 30 years on this council. I done dealt with complete towing and people moving around lobbying council persons for years. I didn't vote for a republic in the middle of that mess and it was based upon service and cost. And so I don't put it past a person to come and publicly say they reached out to me, but I don't put it past me that I missed something because I'm human, I can miss something. But I don't miss much. Council people call me. I got citizens call me. I don't miss much. I see the little red crooked arrow, miss call. Three times, it's hard to convince me of that. It could be true. I don't like politics. $19 million contract. $19 million contract, two years, extension, change order, versus a um, request for proposal. We sound hypocritical in this city. I just read somewhere the mayor was bragging about putting out proposals for some with the mayors around the country, and it's a good process. You can't make me buy into some without discussing the details. I don't care who didn't call who and what Kate Fields and others is saying about who talked to them and if the mayor and them agree. I'm a councilman. I'm a vetted. And I'm finna start now. Mr. President, can I start where I left off at and get Mr. Hicks back up? Mr. Hicks, are you willing? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Come on, you, you, you're good. Mr. Hicks, give me a general description of the contract that we're fixing to try to enter into. How much can be picked up at each house, including the evictions and big items and what would be left? That's been the detail of your contract. Is it still there? Give me some of that if you understand my question. If not, I'll clarify it. No, sir, I understand. It is a two and a half year price firm for two and a half years. There are no rate increases. There are no fuel surcharges. It is the exact same service that you receive today. Weekly recycle, weekly seasonal yard waste, weekly unlimited solid waste. It ain't weekly unlimited solid waste if we worried about evictions that set out there. Do y'all pick up all the evictions now? <coughs> we do. And that will be in the next two years. If I see us couches and all kind of stuff setting out, it ain't getting left. That is correct, sir. It doesn't get left today. And have it been left in the last year? Has it been left? Yes, yeah. no, sir. Sir, what if I can leave this council chambers, take you over on Home Street now? It was there when I left. This was pickup day. Would it surprise you that evictions is setting out in the first ward now? Would that surprise you? Uh, no, sir. You want to reach out to me and travel with me and look? Anytime. Okay, let's do it tonight. Can I, and let me, let me. And I'll postpone this until you prove me wrong. Let me, let me clarify. Okay, okay. clarify. So, we used to pick up all of the bulk piles <coughs> with the regular collection. And then we started getting phone calls saying, hey, you're usually here at 2 o'clock. Why aren't you here yet? So if the pile is too big, based on the size of the pile, it will get left 
your blight department is notified of that then we send a separate truck back through to pick it up um miss galloway I how long do that take it's always the same week let me say this i done had regular trash pickup left and i done been on three-way calls with my constituency that didn't even get picked up the same week mm, i'm sorry i'm not aware of that sir i am aware you believe me i do I, I, you want me to call my residents in? They'll do one side of the street, leave the other side. We call on a three-way, and they'll say, we'll schedule it. They're sorry. They'll give me a confirmation number. We've got confirmation numbers, and it go two days, three. We call back again. You know when they get it? The next week on the regular day, and my constituents just pulls it back to the garage after three four days two three calls to republic are you familiar with that um, I, you never I, heard of that in your life oh that's as it relates to flint oh certainly you have heard oh certainly so you know there are some problems who do we reach out to and really get a circle back same day or next day uh, you it's always been me, sir. It ain't been you with me. I've been talking to operators. Did you know they ain't even located here? They in other states, the people I talk to. Y'all got people in other states, correct? Yes, sir. I ain't talked to you or call you yet, have I? It's been a couple of years. I'm talking, yeah, uh, 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 about missed pickups. Yeah, I have not spoke to you. No, you, you have not. That. Let me say this, Mr. Hicks. I'm telling you. $19 million contract, and I'm confused. you saying it's unlimited pickup, but the evictions will stay there until you call Raul, our blight department, and schedule it with them. Why do you schedule that with our blight department and not just pick it up? What is going on? No, no. It's, make it make sense to me. It's, it's not called the Raul to collect. It's called to the blight department to notify them that it was there. The blight department equally notifies me when there's something else out there. It happens every day. Okay, I know that I notifies the blight department, and if they notify you and they pick it up, I need to hear that. But then not only do I need to hear that, but what is you notifying the blight department for, and all you got to do is pick it up? It's because the communication between the blight department and republic is very very strong we that's notify cool. them when we see something let like me that. say this you want to notify councilman mays when you see something in the first ward i'll be happy to okay if you want, let's do that for 30 to 60 days if you want to notify me you can still notify the blight department but i'll notify you when i see couches and stuff sitting there Please do. Day after day. Please do. I, I, I Let me say this. You don't have to, in my opinion, notify the Black Department. If you're standing before me telling you, me you pick up garbage, recycling, and evictions, pick them up. And how long do it take on a normal route after you notify Blight, after you don't pick it up on the regular route? You think the average pickup of that big bulk stuff is how many days well, i would say an average of three three okay so if i see something longer than three days i should call you please do what's your number eight one zero well, i'll give you a cut eight one zero no, i won't i won't i won't I, you don't have to say it out loud we'll we'll protect your privacy i'll take your car i don't know if i'm ready to vote because I don't trust what I'm hearing, so to speak. And I'm going to tell you why I don't trust it, because it's coming at me too fast. And when it come at me fast and I know it ain't accurate, I got a problem. I haven't seen stuff said in more than three days. And you, and you corrected it when I say, follow me now. Then you say, oh, it takes me. It ain't the same day pickup. OK, I'll get that to you. This is my position. Bidding to the administration means something. Don't bring me a $19 million change order and folks lobbying all around me and I ain't heard nothing. They can do what they want with it. 
and you can lie before and five of them. And I ain't heard in no public meeting, no discussion about services, possible raises. So they can vote for you. They can be happy that they beat me and voted for it. I ain't voting for it tonight. Now I move it back for further discussion. This is a $19 million contract. Details. Folks hooving around in meetings ain't said what it really was. Now I got to vote. It's time for me to really look at it. Should have already been done. You should have stood before me in committee and reached out to me if you was here. You say you called me three times but ain't tapped me on the shoulder. You didn't even tap me on the shoulder and say, I tried to call you three times, but you say you was here. You ain't said nothing to me today. You ain't said nothing to me if it was in committee. I'm suspicious of that. You are reaching out to me publicly, I called you three times and was here and ain't tapped me on the shoulder and say, I want to talk to you. You think I didn't go to Michigan State? It don't make sense to me. That just don't make sense to me. It's important for you to reach out three times. You come to a committee meeting before this meeting knowing this $19 million contract and don't tap me on the shoulder and say, Councilman Mays, I'll try to catch up with you. I'm suspicious of that type of activity. I understand. You do understand? Sure. Yes, sir. Look, this is a $19 million garbage contract. All of a sudden, those who question the administration all of a sudden say, I trust the administration. I trust them. Let me. Councilman, hold on. Now, we're on 180540. Did you combine both of them? I'm talking about both of them. Okay. All right. Because now here's what I want to do because we're, 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 we're steady going and we're steady going. I've got two more speakers on this. We're talking about whether we, we, this is a separation. It is your separation, both of them. But I'd like to get to Councilman Guerra and Councilman Davis. Would you please proceed on? Mr. President, I'd like to get to Councilman Guerra and Councilman Davis too, but I'm Councilman Mays, and this is a $19 million contract. I know, but, uh, but what I'm saying, Councilman, and the either money we can, ain't we can, we're going to vote it on or we're going to send it back to committee. That's yeah, what I'm but, but if gonna I know we're going to send it back to committee, I can talk short. Because then I have time to deal with it where I think it should be dealt with in detail. Okay, proceed. So I don't know. I didn't heard what two people said, and I count well, votes. Well, right. I want to. I want to say something too. All That's right. why I want to get to everybody. I but, want everybody to say but something. But how important well, well, is well, a nineteen well, million dollar well, contract? Well, let's just calm down. We, we, you're going to talk. You will not want to hear what you got to say. You got the floor. I was just saying. I've got Councilman Guerra, Councilman Davis, Councilwoman Galloway. Then I'm going to talk. So proceed, and Councilwoman, would you come take my place just for a minute? Go ahead. I ain't got no problem with folks interrupting me to say how many people want to speak behind me. And when I get ready to speak behind them, I want them to interrupt and say I want to speak behind them. My point is this. This is a serious business. I done heard from two of my colleagues saying they ready to vote, it seemed. That's what I think I heard. And then I can hear other colleagues, and I count well, Mr. Hicks, public. If I was to count Galloway, Worthen, maybe Griggs, and Fields, that's four. One more, you got your $19 million contract, and I ain't properly vetted it. I ain't vetted it in a finance way, and I ain't vetted it in a service way. And I don't like people making up answers as they go along different from what I've been experienced in real life. You ain't telling me it's a policy for eight wards and the guy who didn't vote for you before is getting stuff left setting out in one ward. I don't think I'm hearing that. But what you are hearing is me telling you I'm watching couches and stuff set for weeks on the curb. That's what I'm telling you. Whether you know it whether somebody playing a game on the first ward, this is the time I get to tighten up the act. The way you tighten up the act is you don't give a contract till you get an agreement that you know about. See, because the administration and the mayor might not get the calls that I get. You know who they call frontline 
Councilman Mays, they didn't pick up my garbage. Councilman Mays, when we gonna get them couches and stuff picked up? Councilman Mays, them, that's, that causes raccoons and possums and Councilman Mays. So I don't know what the administration agreeing to. I know what I'm gonna vote on and what I wanna hear and what I'm gonna agree to. We in our first investigative hearing. Folks come up here and just blow smoke up our pants leg. But when you put them under oath, and it's a piss possibility the penalty of perjury, they won't just come up here and tell you anything. They won't tell you what they'll pick up and don't. They won't tell you how many times they've reached out to you. The penalty of perjury and swearing people in means something. For a $19 million garbage contract, I'll do that. Yeah, but we have it don't have to be a hearing. We could ask it to be done now. I want to know about that contract. Now, when I hear my colleagues, particularly the leader of this council, President Winfrey, say you got some people willing to speak, I gave up the flow to Ms. Galloway, to Ms. Fields, and if my attitude can change now because I was doing something. When my attitude has changed, then I'm going to get back to reading and writing and reading your contract later. Because stuff is off teal. If Mr. Guerra want to say something, Mr. Winfrey want to say something, and whoever else, he said, I'm polite, but I ain't got my questions answered. Do we have a copy of this contract attached to this resolution? I don't believe so, but we can. I don't believe so neither, but I want to see it and read it before I vote. When did I become so trusting of everybody that I'm voting on contracts that ain't before me and I'm reading because somebody done called and lobbied a few council persons? Complete used to do that. Complete towing. This reminds me of that type of activity, Ms. A Republic got to show me written contracts. I want to read it. The, the contract is the current contract that you have. It should be attached because the current contract ain't worked for me. And do the current contract say you picking up evictions? Yes, sir. I would make a referral and I want that current contract in my mailbox as soon as possible. I ask that the current Republican contract that they telling me is an extension and this one will be identical so it wasn't nothing taken away, nothing added. You have that, that ain't what I think I done heard okay. here today. You tell them, somebody said something about $21. Clear that up. Whoever said something about $21, they, they clear it up because I'm here and ain't nothing subtracted, ain't nothing added. So, Councilman, I said that's a ceiling of how much we would have to increase the. Say that again. That's a ceiling, that's a maximum. We don't know. I haven't, I have not proposed a number for the increase in. So, we looking for a possible change order to this contract when it go up, possibly well, up to $21. No, 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 no. The, what we're talking talking about, if you read the resolution, we're saying that it would, it, there might be a special assessment. Remember, the garbage fund is funded via a special assessment. But well, why would I vote prior to knowing all of that? Um, no, what was put in the resolution was so that you are informed that, and reminded. Yeah, but he just it. said it ain't no changes. Now you saying it could be changes, maybe no changes not in the, the contract, contract, but in the price to residence. Councilman, he said that there's no changes in, in the, the contract. contract, with the exception, obviously, of the dollars. Well, now I hear the exception. I didn't hear that. Okay, well. So I, now I, I hear the exception. Said. All I want to do is get a clarification, and if you want to do it now, I stay here to 10, 30, 11 at night. If my colleagues want to talk, then I'm going to move the post it to finance. Depending on how much I hear here, it's going to tell me something. I know I ain't going to have a written contract to review to match up with what's being said. I'm hearing no changes with the exception of money. Money is important. Do you know how many council persons was bragging no increase to the residents? Point of information. What's your point? Um, is my colleague willing to make a motion to postpone this to the next finance committee to discuss? I will move to postpone it, but let me ask you this question before I do. 
When do the current contract terms expire? November 12th. That's an important question to ask. See, that's what's important. And that's all, that question was in my mind. But when Ms. Galloway asked me that, when I make a motion, we got a, a meeting, we, can, we might have to meet before the 12th. Through you, Mr. President, to the um, clerk or you, do we have a council meeting on or before the 12th of November? We have, we have a council 12th. meeting on the 12th. On we the have 12th. committee meeting on November the 7th. So we got a council meeting on the 12th. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a regular council meeting. Regular Let council me ask you meeting. this question. Can do a that contract expires at midnight on the 12th? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so that means if we pass it on the 12th, we ain't missing that. Uh, I'm, I'm 1159 that night, so you, you would, council would be meeting as the contract is about to expire. And administration specifically wanted to get this in front of you so we would not hit you with something um, the night the council, the night that the contract ended. So if it's done so that we had at least two sets of meetings. Do so the contract end on 1159 on the 11th or 1159 on the 12th? On the 12th. Yes. So that means we ain't going to probably still be meeting at 1159 on the 12th. We'll probably meet somewhere between 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, Councilman, the point that I was trying to make was we wanted to give you all ample time. Okay, we also, we, continue we also got ample time to call a special meeting on the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the 7th. That's how important garbage was before. I couldn't agree more. This is why we wanted to bring okay, it to that's you. that's why I'm talking. Council's so when is the um, committee meeting? On the 7th. 7th. I would move that um, we postpone these um, resolutions to finance committee meeting on the 7th. There's a motion on the floor Mr. to President. Councilwoman Galloway. I'll second that motion. There's a motion there and it's been second. Discussion. Is there any discussion? There is. Uh, oh, Devine, let's put us on time because yes. we've talked about this one all And night. I will not. Go I ahead. will not. I'm not talking. No, no, no. Go no, ahead. No. Go ahead, nope. go ahead mm -hmm. Councilman. I want to tell everyone why I support that motion. Councilman Mays, I want to thank you. Um, I went back to the proposal that was in question um, and the proposal that came from Republic at that time was a five-year base price um, that came out to 19518 um, and n no I'm looking at my notes right here and Rizzo's was 17422 um, but if I'm not mistaken, um, Republic accepted Rizzo's three-year bid, which, if I'm if I'm correct in my numbers, I don't was something like um, ten million five. Was that what was it roughly? Yeah, I, I actually don't remember the numbers, but it wasn't a three-year. We ended up the court order was a one-year with a one-year extension based on the same price, same services. Okay, but the reason for that is in doing the, the bid of the five-year at the 19518 that came out to a yearly cost of 3903 if my numbers are correct. Um, but this new contract comes out to four, I'm sorry, well, I wrote Davis, it down here, four million five. I'll tell you in a second. And so there's a huge increase. Mm -hmm. And so when we sit here and say that the prices have gone up, the prices did go up. They went up a lot. Yes, ma'am. So, so I, I just think that it warrants information more to talk about to say why, you know, don't, I know that you're saying the rates have gone up. But even in this, we see a, a rate increase of about six hundred thousand dollars. Is that is that about right? Do you know, Gary? Yeah, if your math is correct, yes, ma'am. Okay, and so so I think that Councilman Mays brings up a very valid um, point in in making sure because nobody wants to raise the rates on the constituents twenty one dollars. But my thing is, 
Even if we had stuck with what Republic was doing for three years, the constituents would have had more. And so we, we really do need to do our math. But according to this 19, 589, 319, divided by five, comes out, oh, I'm sorry, comes out to, oh, but this isn't a five-year contract. Correct. According to this is four point, I'm sorry, that's where I got the number. 4.559717 is a difference of $600,000 from what the bid was just two years ago when we had all of the commotion. So that, that warrants discussing and I would be willing to support sending it and having a special meeting to make sure that our constituents do not have an issue with trash pickup. That's all I have. Okay. Councilman Garrett. Yeah, I asked for the floor in the other motion. Um, so I wasn't specifically on this one. Um, well, you know, you can you, is that working right today? Is it? You got me? I said I had asked the floor on the other motion, not specifically heard, on this motion. I heard that, so okay. it was working, but go ahead. All right, that's all I had to say on that. I'll wait for the other. <laughs> okay. Anybody else on this? Uh, Councilwoman Fields? I don't want to go into all the details, but I think Councilwoman Galloway is maybe not remembering everything that happened regarding that price and regarding the court order and how it ended up like that. In the beginning, when the First bids were put out that Republic and Rizzo, and I think there was another one, had responded to. Okay, the bid had not been fully analyzed, the analysis of the bid results. And the then Director of Transportation, K. Muhammad, if you want to read the RTAB minutes of that time Point period. of information. What's your point? Does my colleague realize that I'm simply going off of what Republic bid, not the vetting process? Okay. Proceed. The, but it's regarding the price that Republic had to go by. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. The reason the, the court ordered that, and it never made any sense to me whatsoever, because the analysis of it had never been completed, and that was part of the problem, and that was part of what caused counsel to file the lawsuit. <laughs> To, to with the injunction to stop this contract to Rizzo going through because the analysis did not include all of the value added like the recycling costs <coughs> and the blight the additional uh, blight activities they were going to do and then for some unknown reason the court ordered that Republic would do the job at Rizzo's bid but Rizzo's bid was never realistic because it did not include those value-added items. And, um, you know, I know that's a lot to go in at this time of night, but if you read those documents, especially K. Muhammad's testimony at the RTAB meeting, and I actually have it, I can email it to you if you'd like, you'd understand why that price is not one that they had bid, it was the one that Rizzo had bid, and it wasn't realistic. Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Mays? Yeah, Mr. Hick, Hicks, right? Yes, sir. Mr. Hicks, I want you to know, I believe you're going to get the contract. I believe you're going to do it, but I believe it's a way to do it. We did a 30-year deal that the other council wouldn't do, and we passed that vote. We are a different council now. And so we do good work, and we do um, things that need to be done. That's why I'm asking, and it's an important question, when did the contract expire? When you talk about contracts, you look at beginning dates, ending dates. I'm glad we got time. I'm glad they didn't tell me tomorrow. I appreciate Ms. Galloway saying that she's willing to meet in a special meeting. We know how to get our work done. And that's going to give you some days to reach out to me and some days to reach out to you. But it ain't about me and it ain't about you. It's to me about the residents and the services that they get. And maybe it is about me. I don't want to keep getting them calls. I, I totally and I don't want nobody's reputation bad, mine, yours, or whatever. So I believe if the administration had met, I might go along with it. I didn't vote last time. I might go with the extension of the change order versus a putting it out for bid. But I want to talk about it. 
I want to look at terms of contracts, finances, and changes. So if you hear what I'm saying, that's what I'm meaning when I'm doing this. I'm not trying to do nothing spectacular and think it's another company going to come, or you might want to talk to me because they might have been tighter with the pocketbook than me. I might want to do something and learn about dumpsters being set out. I'm proposing to get Raul a claw to pick up stuff and clean up wards. So this is very interesting to me. I want to see what you can do and can't do. And I'm telling my colleagues, if they don't want to talk about it tonight, then support it back in finance. I will put it as the top special order, get you in and out of there, and Benden did homework before I get there. And Benden did homework before I get there. So, Madam Clerk, Mr. President, if this go back to finance, I wanted us the top special order, and I'm going to bend and did some homework. And I believe me and you going to bend and talk. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Davis, then Councilman Guerra. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> nice to finally meet you, Mr. Hicks, because the Republic is the one that collect, well, I guess all over the city, but mainly I, I'm, I'm elated to see y'all when you're in my ward. All I need is a couple questions for clarity. Yes, sir. Um, now, when it comes to, to evictions, you, you collect them. We do. How could a resident go about, if we was to pull up some of them, we got a lot of banded and blighted properties in my ward, land bank properties. If we pull them to the curb, that trash, they don't, you only pick up from occupied residents. That is, well... That is correct. Unfortunately, I believe we're picking up from a lot of properties that, that are not generating revenue to the city for their trash, like land bank properties. You saying you are? If it's at the curb, we are picking it up. So this is my clarity. I'm only one vote. I support Republican. I re support the administration. I'm not a numbers person. I'm a service person. I'm tired of the blight in my ward. That's why I'm elected and I'm sitting here to have this conversation. If me and some of these neighborhood associations pull some of this blight that's destroying our neighborhoods to that curve and we call you, even though it's been sitting there as Councilman, our ward stay blighted. It seems like that's the way they want us out of there. But if we come to an agreement, we pull it without a dumpster, and it, it ain't that much, but it make our neighborhood look real bad. Across that curve, it's got it in a neat pile, and we contact you any kind of way you can tell this body that you will pick it up. Yes, sir. The only thing I would encourage is that if it's a land bank property, yes, contact land bank for them to collect it. It is their responsibility for that property. And just one more thing to know, I cannot go up onto the property to collect it. That's why some of the stuff, some of the stuff that you may see is actually beyond the curb, and by law I can't go up there and Absolutely. take it. And then I, I want to add one more thing. There is a really bad problem with bed bugs in this city. Yes. So you may see an item sitting, and that's where I will notify Blight. Blight will then notify the resident we can't pick that up until it's properly prepared. This stuff I'm referring to through you, Mr. President, to Mr. Hicks, it's been sitting there for months on the end, if not years. And it's frustrating. Me being a council person, it's like I'm not doing my job. We turn it in to the Blight Department, and we're going to make more motion to get a, a more timely response because it is frustrating. But I'm not a numbers person. I'm only one vote. We. The quality of work Republicans do, I cannot dispute that. But I'm just saying, we will contact Blight. Land bank is land bank. They got immunity, and that's frustrating. We didn't discover that a while ago. They don't take care of their properties. We know that. But we deserve, according to the preamble of the charter, to have a safe, clean environment to live in. And Republican, Republican, your service is the one that provides that. Yes, sir. I don't have an issue with the increase or whatever your contract, 19 million. It's not, it's the service, the quality of the service. And the only thing I would wish within your contract, extension or however you want to word it, that you consider being lenient if we 
put it across to public property on across the curb stop, some of it. And we do it, if you don't get it all at one time, that's fine. But over a period of time to help the residents help themselves. And I'm done. Councilman Guerra. Yeah, uh, I won't be supporting sending this back to council. I know I had some questions and I asked Huey about them and we talked about that in my office. I think that this is the most fiscally responsible thing we can do uh, in regards to trash pickup um, because it's not something I'd like to see delayed, especially if it comes to that point. Uh, and I have contacted you guys for several issues um, and you guys have been right on it. I think it's important though for residents watching to take and know what you said is that you're not the blight department, so you can't go onto properties and take stuff. And I know we've had some issues in, that I've called you guys on that had to do with bed bugs and they have to wrap that before you can pick it up because you don't want that spreading to your employees uh, their homes and spreading throughout the areas because you know the garbage men they go from house to house so that would definitely travel if that does um, so I just want to thank you guys for the I mean if it went up for a bid I, I feel like we would be paying a lot more money uh, from the city of Flint for these things and I think the change order was responsible uh, for the administration to do so I will not support suspending uh, to sending this back to committee and I hope that we can vote on this tonight and approve it thank you thank you councilwoman Galloway yeah thank you um, I just want to make sure for clarity that um, one of my colleagues mentioned about K. Mohammed. I'm very familiar with that. I was a part of that. I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking specifically about the amount that Republic bid on that contract. And your bid included all of those things. You guys offered services to assist Blight. You assisted Raul, and so, um, Gary, you and I have worked very closely. There are some issues, like over in my neighborhood, they're very angry because trash is picked up about 4 or 5 p.m., and I get it. I, I, with that contract, it stripped you guys. You lost a lot of people. I was there. I was here. I saw the recruitment from Rizzo, from Republic, where your employees literally jumped ship because it was like a done deal. So I get that. But I also heard something today that I didn't hear. For some people, a $21 increase per lot don't mean a lot. But over where I serve with seniors, I want this time to be able to inform them that an increase is on the horizon. And so I'm physically responsible but I don't, I don't, my colleagues were not here. I went back to what you guys bid, not what Kay Muhammad said, not with the vetting process, realizing that you guys took a contract that was un, un, almost impossible to manage. And you know I know that. When I call you, Gary, you respond. I was just showing Miss um, Winfrey Carter. I go through my neighborhood, and if I see large amounts of trash, I take a picture of it. I text it to Gary and I say, hey, just so you know, trash day is XYZ day. This is on the curb at address such and such and such. In case you need to have two men come out to do it or if you want them to come before or after. So you and I have a great relationship and, and, and so it's not that. But I do want to use the time if, I, if it passes to, to let my constituents know that this trash collection is higher and you could see an increase of possibly $21 because when they were talking about $10, people were. So this is an opportunity for me to communicate effectively with my constituents, even if I support it in the end. And you and I have already talked. So I just want that for my constituents that are looking in the seventh war, be ready to hear about a possible increase in property taxes because for everybody, $21 can make a difference. Mr. Yeah, could I say, could I say something, Councilman? I haven't said anything, and and uh, uh, I almost call you Councilman. That's just how confused I am when we keep going over stuff for so long. But uh, Mr. Hicks, I'm glad that you were here, and I did see you at uh, at the um, committee meeting. I did see you at the committee meeting. But now here's what I wanted to say: you and I are in contact quite often. Yes, sir. And whenever my constituents, as as others have, other my other colleagues have had constituents that have had issues, but whenever I call you, you get on it, and you do it either that day or the next day. That's been consistent. Now you did call me 
and talk to me about this, but I didn't know whether you were calling me back because I had called you, and we, we do back and forth when I want, when I need something. You had said to me that you had talked to, you were trying to get in contact with my colleagues. Those were things that you said to me. You named some colleagues that, that you had gotten into contact and some that you were still trying to get in contact with. And I don't remember the ones that you said that you had gotten. I think, I know you said that you had gotten in contact with, with Councilman Garrett, but there were a few others. And there were some that you said that you had been trying and you, that's to, and you couldn't get it because you didn't get an answer, but you were gonna to continue to try. That's to your credit. So I'm saying all that to say this. I want my colleagues to get the answers that they need to make intelligent decisions. But I still want us to do this work where it's supposed to be done. Now, it, it was in committee. For whatever reasons it wasn't done, I don't know. But th this is a clear example of how we should be real cautious when we're in committee so we can do that work in committee. Because here we are, we've been talking about this, this set aside almost one hour. And I ain't saying that it shouldn't be talked about that long, but I'm saying it shouldn't be talked about that long out here. And this is to my colleagues, let's do this work in committee. That's all I gotta say. Thank you for, for, for being here at the committee. Thank you for being here at, at this council meeting. Uh, Councilman Mays, you Yeah, Mr. Here. President, and I don't blame y'all if it came through committee, but I'm still asking when you got a big ticket item. Point of order. And you, What's your point? I got to be a stickler for the rules. That's more than twice. For this, for this, for the motion? You know who made the motion, don't you? I yeah. made it. She supported right. it. She supported this is it. the second she round the on this one, motion. She was the first You're one wrong. to vote. Right. Yeah, you, you said it because he has, uh, so proceed. I'm thinking it's the second time on this motion to postpone. That's what I think. Now, I could be wrong, but proceed, I appreciate it. My colleagues, Mr. Garrett particularly, I think it's the second time. And I think people get a kick out of trying to do something with me. Mr. Garrett, I don't know if you've read the contract, but I have to read rather than listen. And you might have talked with Mr. Hicks, mm -hmm. but when it comes to me, I want to read and ask questions. I don't want to just talk to the business person and say I feel comfortable. So that's the difference maybe, unless through you, Mr. President, to Mr. Garrett, you've read the contract. The resolution ain't the contract. So I'm talking about the contract. So this is my position. I'm not out to compete to be the best Democrat, the best council person. I'm just out to be who I be. And if you want to read and look and talk, I'm going to do it in a timely manner. I'm telling him I'm leaning toward maybe doing it this way versus putting it out to be it. But there's some things that we need to talk about. And just as you talk to him, I want to talk. And I don't care, Mr. President, if it's been an hour on a $19 million contract. I agree not out here. Yes. But only until I heard something and we discussed it did I know it might get to where it need to be discussed and we all might have time to see what everybody else knows. I really believe Republic will be picking up garbage in Flint, but I really believe we need to tighten up some stuff and talk, and I hope that this motion passes, and I look forward to that. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Madam Clerk, this is a roll call on sending it back to, we said finance. Was it, Are was we it? doing a vote on both of the? At the same At the time. Same, both of them, yeah. 805. 1805 4 0 and 1805 4 4 0 and 1805 4 4 yes. Mr. Winfrey? No. Is this to? You said send it back. We're saying send it back to finance committee. Okay. Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Ms. Worthing. Ms. Worthing. Please. 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 Please.
Miss Worthy and put us to roll call. She can't make the order be Explain nothing else. Order. There's no discussion during. Okay, There's a roll call. Said, no. Okay. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Guerra? No. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. President. If, if I well, could, let, please. Let, let it's uh, four yes and five no. Ms. President. Councilman Mays. I won't be making a motion to approve this, and I will be talking about whether or not we get an increase. An increase in any taxes or garbage is headlines. The media ain't here now, but it'll be headlines. To vote on contracts we ain't read is going to end up being some political suicide. I'm making a record. I know what exactly okay, what I'm doing. Councilman, Councilman, there's nothing on the floor. There's no, I, I got you. You said ain't nothing on the floor, but I'm well, talking I'm on my separation. The, but your separation, we've already voted on it, sir. No, that was just a postpone. It's still separated, and that's why we had in the oh, agenda. Okay, okay, go ahead. Mr. President. Am I missing something? Okay. I said, know I said, I'm not. Councilman, I said proceed. I'm not, I'm not here to argue, and I'm not going to do it tonight. I said proceed. But, Mr. So president, even though you're the president, you done interrupted me twice, and that's a point of order. Well, and you can do it, but Council. don't act like I'm doing something wrong when I'm trying to speak. My uh, train of thought has been disrupted. Councilman, that was not what I was trying to do. You might not have tried to wrong, do it, but when you do you it, it happens. Me like that, I could have so said point of order. You I don't said. like being given the flow and then folks just do what they do. That's me. Okay, so now I'm saying That's you again, me, Ms. President. I'm saying, and I understand that. I'm very serious that. about so my I'm reputation So I'm saying business. for you to proceed on the issue, if you will do so. I was on the issue. We on a separation. I said I wasn't going to make a motion to approve it and going to vote no. Okay. And that's the speech I'm making, because when I finish, somebody's going to make a motion to approve it. And every okay. vote I read, we've been approved a contract for $19 million. We ain't even read. I understand. So I see what the handwriting on the wall. I just want to make it clear before they do it and limit me in a fight. What's your point? I know we didn't do this previously, but I thought that we had all agreed that a motion has to be on the floor okay for us to have discussion because during the postponement i mean there was an hour went by and there was no motion on the floor so i believe a motion has to be on the floor before we enter into all this discussion but i believe a motion was on the floor because we had actually voted on the master Fi finally may, it may, may i finish we had voted on the master uh resolution and then we had we had voted to, there were some separations and then we begin discussion on those separations. No. And then once Sorry. we get done discussion on those discussing those separations, Councilwoman, then we uh, entertain. Mr. President, last approved. Christmas. Point of order. What you can point? you rule on her point of order so I can proceed or not? I'm asking you to proceed. I hadn't heard the ruling on the point. The point she was making is this. She sat back in the committee room, no motion, and we let her go on and on. Now I'm getting tired of the selective memory as to when we talk and can't talk. And I'm getting tired of it. I, I'm usually a nice guy to get along with. When they start competing, yeah, you got to get that in order. I can't. When you're when you're speaking to speak lower because I'm I I I'm I am i can not I can't focus when I'm trying to listen to one speaker and then I got others now. Come on, let's because we need to go ahead and get this business taken care of and get out of here. I agree. Proceed, Councilman Mays. There's proper to call order. This property is proper to call order when a colleague vote and somebody try to change the vote in the middle of the vote. Point of information. I did not try to change his vote. I said, are you sure you know what the motion is for? Did not say a word about voting. So let's go ahead. Bro. Who is a point of information to me or is it to you? Because I'll respond to the point of information. I, I didn't you, say I her to, nobody's I, name. Councilman, I want you to wait a minute. If she felt guilty. Councilman, I want us to start 
focusing on Get them started. It's too late. But, but I want to stay. No, 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 no. It's not going to be too late. It's, it's too definitely late. not going to be too late. Let me but here's it. what I want you to do. I want you to focus. They interrupted me, Mr. President, and you is too. I'm trying to get you to get back on. You said you wanted to talk about your separations, and I'm telling you to go proceed. Mr. President, from the time I called Mr. Newsom up and Mr. Hicks, I was kind to folks. Mm -hmm. I've been interrupted, dealt with, yield of flow just because. I'm an easy guy to get along with, but that's going to stop. I'm not going to be a part of a council that want to vote on contracts, new council members ain't read, don't want to do stuff a certain way, glad and laughing like it's a competition. I ain't here to compete with colleagues on foolishness and voting on contracts that ain't been read for $19 million is foolishness. I won't be a part of it. We ain't under no time crunch. Anybody make a motion has been separated, I'll be voting no. It's a sad day in the city of Flint on this council. And I wish you would keep order on that side of the room when I'm talking because it was outrageous a second ago. And Ms. Worthen said a point of information when I talked about roll call votes and what was happening, maybe she felt guilty. Because in fact she was the one who I was referring to, but I didn't say no name. She did the point of information. We not blind. I'm smart. I'm not Stevie Wonder Ray Charles, and I ain't deaf. I can hear it and see it when Mr. Griggs vote. Now, Mr. Griggs grown, but this has happened repeatedly with Mr. Griggs and Worthen then. Uh, Just repeated. Point of order. What's your point? Uh, uh, what are we doing? We're we have motion. I about. know what I'm doing. Are we just letting well, him go wait, on? Wait, 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 now she's got a point of order. I got to address it. Well, I'm getting ready to address your point of order. You, you call the point of order, and then you got to let me tell you what it what you respond to. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do. You just had a point of order, councilwoman. You just said point of order. Now, would you when I, and I ask you what your point of order, and you ask the question. I'm getting ready to respond to your point of order. We are supposed to be discussing the um, the the uh, separations that was your point of order you said what are we what are we supposed to be discussing is that what you're not asking me? No motion. you didn't ask me about a motion you asked me what were we supposed to be discussing and I said this the uh, uh, separation councilman Mays has two separations we decided that we were not going to send them back to committee that was the vote and now he's talking, he's, he's back on the separation saying that he's not going to, uh, he's not going to approve it. Proceed. Mr. President, and I might be done if it was not for all these unlawful interruptions, particularly now by Ms. Worthy. And the rules say that if you use point of orders and point of information continuously to take the flow and make comments, in this case she's trying to defend herself, it don't say may be removed, it says shall be removed. Shall, meaning must. Now she using point of information and point of order because she don't like what I'm saying. To get the flow and defend herself, wait to get the flow and defend yourself. If you can do it. Because clearly I'm watching what's going on across the aisle. It's happening repeatedly during roll call votes. You don't get the, you don't use point of orders and point of information to get the flow to defend yourself on the truth. Because it says when you do that, you shall be removed. It don't say may, it says shall. Now I know when somebody think they know the rules and being slick to make statements. A point of order ain't no statement to defend myself. A point of order, a point of information is just what they is. Don't abuse it. My point has been made. Nineteen million dollar contract, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't say nothing, Ms. Galloway. Remember the rules when they checked me and say you couldn't talk to the TV and your constituents. Address the council. But I heard you talking to your constituents. I just let it go. They don't let it go because they only discriminate against me when I talk to the audience. Remember the vote. 
and who voted. You must address the council. Hell, I'll talk to the police, I'll talk to the people, and then get removed talking to the people. But just so y'all know, I'm tired of y'all picking and choosing on these rules. Miss Field sat back there and talked no motion on the floor. Now all of a sudden, eh, remember what we decided. I remember every time and gonna remember against y'all. I've been trying to let y'all be good. Davina, you will lose that. Remember what we talked about? They ain't gonna act right. They gonna discriminate toward me. But don't see what they do. Here she's sitting back there talking and talking, no motion on the floor. But when I do it, Remember what we decided. Are you, are you, uh, you trying to push a $19 million garbage contract through and don't know the details to prove that you can put five votes over me. Do it. Same thing the other council used to do. Foolishness and watch what's going to happen. You don't vote on no $19 million contract and ain't read it. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be voting no. And, Councilwoman, and, and, and they will bring me contracts from now. Councilwoman Fields. I would like to make a motion to approve item number 180540 and 180544. There is a motion on the floor to approve 180540, 180544. Is there, is there support President. for that motion? Councilwoman? I support that. There is a, there, it like has been speak. moved and supported. Is there Me. any discussion? Councilwoman got, uh, Worthy. I call for the question. Point of order, Mr. President. What's your point? The call for the question is proper if the discussion has went on long. The discussion it, ain't even started. That's an abuse of the call of the question. That's not the intent of it. I'll I, I say it's out of order. Uh, I disagree. We've been discussing this for hours. <laughs> Okay. There was just no motion. Point of order, order Mr. President. Your you ruling on my point of order and you letting her talk? We ain't there yet. Okay. I, 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 I would really like to have some discussion. And Davina, since we're discussing, we're getting ready to discuss these two motions being sent, 180540, 180544. And I'd like for you to put a clock on everybody that's speaking. We, we, I agree, we have talked about it enough. We're not going to say anything that we haven't already said. Is there any discussion? I see Councilwoman Galloway. Huey, I just have a quick question for you. Um, I was just reading, it says aggregate total. Yes. And so is that aggregate total I'm from the, when it was entered into 16 through 21, so technically that amount would be divided over five years? So yeah, you could do it that way. The way I do it is the, 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 the incremental amount is the 12, not the 19. So the total amount of business that we would have done with, with uh, Republic, which will be over five years, would be the 19. You are correct. Perfect. And, and that lines up. Gary, what what you guys have in the thing? So I'm glad I looked at the act. No problem, okay. Mr. President. Councilman Mays and then Councilman. Yeah, Gary. I would move to separate them. Okay, it's been moved to separate one eight zero. Well, I'm asking that they be separated. I don't have to vote on two things at one time on a final vote. Okay. Never do. It's been it's been you were asking that we we separate them. That's correct. Mr. President. Now, if it take a What's motion. Your What's your point? You, you have to do that in a, some type of substitute or division of the question. You can't ask to have them separated when there's a motion on the floor for both of them. So you're asking him to put that in the form of a motion and be accepted as a, or as a substitute motion? I'm just saying procedurally you can't do it okay. that way. All right. Councilman? Mr. President, um, that's what I was saying. If I have to do a substitute motion, I pause for her point of order. I'm okay. asking that they be voted on separately. So that's, so a, that's your substitute to, yeah, motion? I move to separate. Okay, there's a substitute motion that we separate them. Is there support for that motion? Councilman Davis? Mr. President, yes. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. One of them 
information. Which one is we voting on? First? We're, we're voting on to separate one eight zero five four zero. That's the first. That was the first separation. Yeah. So you're voting to separate each one to vote on each one separately. Yes. Okay. Ms. Galloway. Yes. Mr. Griggs. This is for separation. Yes. No. Ms. Worthy. No. Mr. Mays. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mr. Guerra. No. Ms. Fields. No. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Mr. Winfrey. No. The vote is uh, four yes. I have no. Okay. Mr. So President. back to our original motion. Motion. Mr. President. Councilman Mayor. That takes us back to the original motion to approve both actions at one time. Right. I mean, it's not unprecedented. We do it in the master resolution, but I've never seen colleagues deny a separate vote, whether it's appointees or resolution. So it's some good precedent being set here tonight. I love precedent. Okay. Is some president to vote on contracts without reading them and seeing them? Is a president not to separate? And I'm watching the folks and who's doing it. Okay. So the courtesy for Councilman Mays to colleagues, they can say what they want. Well, when he lose a vote, he get mad. Now, when I'm taking care point of this. Point of order. What's your point? There's threats being made and mocking. Oh. Oh, I woman, he's not threatening. I haven't heard a threat. Okay. He's explaining what's happening. Proceed, Councilman May. Please wrap up so we can go ahead and get this vote out of the way. Go ahead. I'm going to say this, Mr. President. I'm here for business. And I think the community know me by now. And what's going to happen is Ms. Worthen barking up the wrong tree. This council is barking up the wrong tree. What you say, Ms. Worthy? No, 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 no. No, I want to know what she proceed. said because not, if she want to act a fool, I can act a bigger Mayor, fool. Councilman Mays, we're not going to do that. See, we're I gonna, love politics Councilman and ignorance. Mays, hold on just a I second. love ignorant folks. Councilman Mays, we what need, did she say? It not, it's not I want to know what she said since she want to talk out loud. Talk. I want you to warn her and ask to remove her. She acting a fool today Council, and you Council let May. it go. Council May. Now you want me to act a fool to the point no. that you warn me and want to remove me because she doing it? Well, it's, it's what you going to do with her ass? Councilman Mays, that's your first warning. Now you know better. You can y'all can have this doggone council. You warning me, but don't warn that white lady. You gone too. I'm done with it for today. Because when I see white folks Councilman May, fooling around with you're me, out of order. And I appeal to you to deal with her ass, and you don't. I'm done with you uh, and her today. Where, where's uh, Where's Officer Metcalf? I'll appeal your ruling and you, you can, can keep calling it until we discuss the appeal. Let Officer me do this way in my chair. I appeal the ruling of the chair. Officer Metcalf. I appeal the ruling of the chair for not checking that white lady. That's my appeal. Since y'all want to be so smart and discriminatory, I Officer appeal Metcalf. the ruling. I would like for you to move Councilman Mays from these chambers. You gonna entertain my appeal, particularly if it's second you Gary here, Winfrey Carter or anybody else. Now let's see what you gonna do. You, your job is to say is there a second to the appeal? Cause when you remove me and I'm appealing, you ain't recognizing. You gonna get sued, personally and city. Officer Metcalf. We have a council person that I've ruled out of order. And I'm appealing your ruling. I'm asking you to remove him. So I'm appealing your ruling. And your job is to say is there a second. And if you don't, I'm suing you. There's an appeal to the ruling of the chair. What's your job, Mr. Chairman? I would like for you to move him now. Don't let white folks discriminate and treat them and do your damn job. Keep her off my ass. Do your damn job. Remove her ass. Remove him now. He's out of order. You out and of he's order. Not, and you he's not going to stay here. She out of order. Kate feels out of order and you's a damn fool. It's always the black man 
Remove her white ass. Bring her white ass out of order with your handkerchief head, black man. I told you to don't have her fooling with me. And she sat up there laughing and you are black. If you don't, if you need, if you need somebody else to pull him out of here, get you some, get you some help. I'm gonna get you out of here. Let me wipe off for you. I'm gonna get you out of here. You done crossed the line. Big bad man. Shut her ass up. Wow. That's what's gonna happen. I don't play with y'all. There's an hour I see you. And you brought it for it. Thank you, she's there. And to all of my constituents that are here, I apologize to you and to my colleagues, I apologize to you as well. Now, as we're, Madam Clerk, we're back on voting for these. We're voting for 180540. And 180. 0544. Yes. Say again. We're still in discussion. We were. Oh, I thought we finished discussion. Okay. I didn't hear any other discussion. So go right ahead, Ms. Madam Clerk. With the roll call. Yes. Mr. Briggs. To approve these contracts. Okay. The yes. Ms. Worthing. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mr. Guerra. Yes. Ms. Fields. Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? No. The vote is seven yes, one no. Mr. President? Yes, ma'am. I think there was one more separated that there is. I would like to move. It's, it's my separation, Mr. President. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't okay. know that. You can move it, though, and I, I'd like discussion first. Council Councilwoman. Okay, I would like to move 180542 for approval. 180542 for approval. Is there, there's a motion on the floor, Council, Councilman Davis. Mr. President, I second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Mr. President, I just Council. had a quick question. Mr. Newsom, I know, I know that we already approved this. And this is just a budget amendment, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you just briefly tell me how do budget amendments work? Should we approve these and then wait for a budget amendment? I just want to get well, some... The way it should normally work, if okay. everything is working with the departments, we'll amend the budget in conjunction with or in advance of an appropriation or... And you know, obviously, we also need budget amendments to change the payroll, increase the number of positions, right? So it's not just money, but it's also positions, which, of course, leads to money. The way it should work is budget amendments should come with or in conjunction with a, um, in conjunction with a um, procurement. So that was the reason why you, you saw, uh, I believe, 441 come with 444, which was the budget amendment to fund the contract for this year in addition to the actual contract itself for this I, I simply wanted that to mm -hmm. be discussed because it, it, it there's not a consistency. See, yeah, we're, and that's why, and like I said, I know that we already approved this. Yes. Uh -huh. I just wanted that information to be expressed, and, and so I'm good. And just so you're clear, even if we, for whatever reason, fail to see that there's a budget mm -hmm. amendment needed, we can't go into, the system won't allow us to go in and do a purchase Spent. order. Right without right. budget and sometimes that's the reason it comes to you after the fact because that's the check right. that signals the need to come to this body so right. just to clarify any other discussion councilwoman Pierce? just real quickly i just want to mention since this is to pay for a service to provide people that have certain licenses and whatever i sent to um, quite a few people the Mun Mun michigan municipal league notice about their um i don't think it's a job fair but they have an ongoing classified ads for positions and i did receive a response from mr newsom because i mean there's quite a few positions and i hope mr benzik i hope i'd send it to you as well uh, but i hope hr is taking note of that and in the future we can fill these positions because we know we're paying more for these people and these positions than we would if they were employees that's all. Any other discussion? 
Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. The vote is 8 yes, 0 no on 180542. That brings us, uh, Madam Clerk, to liquor license. We have none. Introduction to the first and second reading. First, first, first reading of ordinances. None. Introduction of first reading of ordinances. It says maybe. Uh, the one that's listed on the agenda was postponed back to committee. Okay. It's at six. Second reading and adoption. None. And then it was requested that we add something to the council, which was additional council discussion. That was request at the at the at the onset. That was something that Councilman Mazer requested. Okay. I, I have something. He did it for me, but I'll wait. Okay. okay. So you. then we're at final council comments, and we will start with Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll make it short as possible. Um, I'm hoping soon as possible we could entertain the thought of a council's rules committee soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, as far as the Republic deal, I understand $19 million in the increase of taxes is just about unforbidden when your income didn't increase. But the services that we have, we can't afford. A, a, I'm sure we're already at a bottom dollar price uh, having that to CFO, Mr. Newsom, he don't play with numbers. So I'm sure he got to lean as possible as well as Republic. But I just hope that they can see in themselves to do a little bit more and above, along with the blight as well as land bank, to consider removing the other blight, whether it be dumping or whatever, that we can kind of be more consistent across the community, the whole city, not just my ward. We're removing all blight out of the city of Flint, and I'm done. Councilman Guerra. Yeah, I too, I'm looking forward to the Rules Committee uh, to finally meet and maybe um, edit some of the rules we currently have and or uh, add new ones um, to that. Um, I hope that all residents are staying warm out there with the weather being safe. And uh, there's 15 days, I believe, or something like that to the next election cycle. So I encourage everybody to do their research on the candidates and the proposals and uh, get out there and vote. Um, regardless of who you're voting for, I just encourage you to get out there and vote. Um, thank you. Councilwoman Fields. I'd just like to say, first of all, I'd like to offer an apology to um, our representative from our vendor, Republic. Um, that was a very hostile meeting. I'm sorry um, he was put through that in that manner because he has always been just <coughs> uber polite and, and civil with myself and anyone I know him to be in contact with. I'd also like to say I'm sorry to the residents out there who are watching this that they had to observe this kind of behavior. It, it's really sad when a council person just cannot control their own behavior. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have so few people who come down to council meetings anymore. But I would like to thank those citizens who did come down and remain uh, despite the poor behavior and conduct. and. Uh, uh, we'll keep hoping that uh, that will improve and we can get back to some type of professionalism and civility. Thank you. Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, for Gary, Mr. Um, for um, Republic, I'm sorry. Republic, Gary. Um, I do want to say that, yes, I did want this to go back to committee because I think that um, Republic, $19 million, I think you do all the citizens of this community, the citizens of Flint, you know, a breakdown of your services. So I would like to make a referral that we um, have Republic back to committee for like a special order so we can talk about 
the contract and talk about the um, sub services that Republic renders, okay? Now, what, know. what committee are you you're asking that to be in? Um, um, probably governmental ops. Okay. And that's maybe what, that what maybe that can happen um, soon before the new contract starts. Thank you, Councilwoman Galloway. Thank you, um, and and I did vote no. And Gary, I do support you. One of the things that I'm I'm hoping is um, I I, I want to see how that increase looks. I know that um, Huey said he hoped that the cap would only be $21, but he doesn't really, it wasn't really clarified for me. Um, I want to say thank you, Gary. You, you always respond to me. Um, there are a lot of constituents that I get information late from, though. They don't think to call me because they call your customer service number and they're waiting for that customer service number to respond to them. And then when it doesn't, then they finally respond to me. And so um, I, I, I wanted to, to mention that. And I'm hoping now, because based on the aggregate, you guys are right where you were when you bid on the five-year contract. So hopefully that will cause you to have the ability to increase your staff um, because I, I don't, you guys spoiled us. Before that Rizzo thing happened, trash pickup was not as delayed. We didn't see trash on the curb, at least where I live. It might be, you know, might not be a lot of, um, as much blight maybe, but we didn't see trash on the curb at four and five o'clock in the afternoon. And I know you guys are getting better because I came home last on Thursday and it was already gone. So thank you. And I just wanted you to know why I didn't support it. I'm concerned about the increase. I know we have to make increases, but it's a very trying time. People can't afford their water bills right now. So thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Griggs. Uh, to the public that was able to stomach this meeting this long, please vote November 6th. Thanks. <laughs> Councilwoman Worthy. I uh, do think that we should make landlords accountable for this garbage that's left. I mean, I've seen it many times a person moves or maybe they're evicted. Um, there is just trash everywhere, and I'm surprised it gets picked up, to be honest. So, in order to lessen fees and an increase for all of us, they should be paying those extras and and there's so many things that we need to enforce with landlords that we are not doing in the city of Flint so I do think we need to have a conversation on that and maybe I'll put that um, on the agenda for legislative but we are not enforcing um, some of these uh, ordinances that we already have and and this one I think we need to create a new one uh, to to make sure that they pay these extra fees and fines so we're not paying for someone else's uh, garbage to be picked up. Um, but thank you for uh, holding certain council members accountable for their actions today, Mr. President. I'm going to start holding everybody accountable for their actions. Uh, did we get to you, did we get you Mr. Day? We got you. Again, to all of our constituents out there, I want to apologize for the behavior. And uh, this is just not this is not good, but sometimes you you have to do you have to use let the uh, rules of the council apply, and uh, we try to be lenient where we can. We always try to be fair, but uh, there are certain things that we just can't let go. So with that, to my colleagues, uh, I will see you Wednesday, and then we have a our next committee meeting will be held on Wednesday, November the seventh. Regular committee meeting Wednesday, November the 7th, followed by a council meeting, a uh, regular council meeting on November the 12th. Okay, with that. Mr. President. Councilwoman. I make a motion that we adjourn. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Griggs, you, you really want to second that motion? Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Yeah, Wednesday night, yeah. Is that where you got to be?
Flint City Council meeting sponsored by the Flint City Council. Broadcasting on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint on Sundays from noon to noon. And on YouTube, a live stream sponsored by the Flint Pipe Fitters Union, Locals 370s, encouraging us to hire local. Facebook live stream sponsored by the Paul H. and Angela R. Herring Fund, determined to make a difference. watching.